Hello and welcome to the Tawans Local Clio series, round five. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. Good evening everybody and welcome to live coverage of round number 5 of the 2013 Touring Pro Series Tom Onslow Cole Clio Series. And so it's backed officially by BTCC driver Tom Onslow Cole and his BTCC team, Team Hard. And of course run an association with GamePod.co.uk, Casio, Miltech Sport, InsideSimRacing.tv and Cancer Research UK. My name's Scott Woodris, I'll be guiding you through the action tonight. I was supposed to be joined by Keith Barrett but unfortunately some last minute technical problems of, uh, and last minute issues have unfortunately imprinted him to taking part. He did let us know at the last minute, which is rather 
um, um, inconvenient and unfortunate, but uh, apart from that, it will be myself on comms and cams for you again. I'm on double duty as I was back in Thruxton. And what a fantastic two races we had in Thruxton. Two, uh, we had a winner piece for Toby Davis and Simon Kielov, two fantastic races around the fastest circuit in the UK. But now we've moved across from the UK, and this is where we are now for round number five. We're here in Poland. We're here at the fantastic Tor Poznan circuit. We now reach the halfway point in the series, and there is now a clear breakaway fight in the championship between three drivers, all striving for that top prize of getting a real-life test drive in a Team Hard Run VW Cup car at Brands Hatch with tuition from Tawans Local and also a passenger drive with him in his brand new v Vox podium winning, in fact, Volkswagen Passat CC, NGTC BTCC car. So, as we go into it, of course, we've still got a few more rounds to go. We've got Autodrome in Most, and then we're going to head across to the, the last four races are going to be back onto British shores. We're going to head to Croft in Yorkshire. Then we're going to head to the home of British Motorsport, Silverstone, back to Sneston, my local circuit. And then if we haven't got a champion by then, it'll be down to a straight fight on what will hope for, surely be one of the most hotly anticipated races in T at Knock Hill. So, let's... Just before we get on to the tra in track action, as they stand coming into Poznan, there it is on the screen in front of you. And let's now read down exactly how they're going to come through into this race season. If I can bring it, the points myself up onto the screen for me, so I can at least read them myself. But I can tell you that from what I can see on the screen, it is Jack Keithy leading the standings currently from Simon Kielov with Toby Davis in third place. And those guys are the start of the breakaway pack at the top of the table. Jesper Tolborg currently sits in fifth with Tommy Lee sixth. And John Monroe, the, which, who is uh, Precision's latest signing, the young Scotsman, is already up to sixth in the points after a mix of fortunes uh, in Thruxton. But he's now here in Poznan, and the, all their cars are looking extremely quick. I'm looking at the times now. Very competitive times from a lot of people and a lot of drivers in there, too. Uh, a few more drivers up there. Oh, kind of likes of uh, Rasmus Salo's in there, too. Uh, and also we've got Alexander Larritsen and Pipa Rodriguez. Gary Lennon's also up there, too. Jimmy Hughes, as well. So there are a lot of drivers there that are scoring some really decent points hauls. And I'm really, ho I'm really hoping that we're going to have a fantastic run towards the championship. So there are our 30 runners for today. Also a key runner is Ryan Callan. He's back. He won both races at Thruxton. You see him there in the points. That's roughly around if I can work it. And quickly in my maths at 22nd in the points in the Team Game Pod car as well. And we've got a nice full field of cars for you to go through. Just very quickly, we'll remind you of these at the end, but just quickly some events that are coming up soon before we get to the qualifying session. We've got about six and a half minutes left in the practice before we do go to that five-minute qualifying. The next event after this is going to be the, uh, the reaching the mid-season point of the Virtual V8 Supercars. It's, it's their first of two trips to North America because they head to the fantastic Watkins Glen facility just near New York. And that race is going to be live-streamed at 5.15 at GMT time or 6.15 UK time on the 25th of May. So that is this coming Saturday. And then the race after that is going to be the season finale for the Virtual Mini Challenge. That is going to be taking place also in America at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. That race will be, those races will be run and shown at 7.15 GMT or 8.15 UK time on the 31st of May, which is going to be next Friday. And we should have a champion decided by that uh, if we haven't uh, already. Uh, but we've got more of the standings up here. So you can see exactly how they come through. So I can't actually read them myself. But I'm going to try and look at the rest of this. Rasmus Salah was sixth. John Monroe is currently seventh. Dan Adams, Heinz Petzold, and Alexander Larritz. So the team's position motorsports on top with THR Orange second. Court Racing Lenovo in third. Then we've got THR Purple fourth. Ice Cobb Lenovo fifth. And we have Optimum Blue 6th, THR's Green and Red in 7th and 8th, Core Racing Prime in 9th, and Precision Motorsports 2 rounding out the top 10. I think it's about time we saw some cars on track, don't you? And here they are then. This is uh, the run that we've got here so far. Just ticking over the 5 minutes left in the current qualifying session that we have then going on. The current practice session, I should say, here at Parsnow. The man that's on at the top of the times is this man, Alexander Larrison on the 144.636, running the rest of the times. It's extremely close because the top four times are all held by precision drivers. It's Larrison and Keithy on a 44.668, and Kilov on a 44.6675, then John Monroe on a 44.875. Uh, Florence Strauss, fantastic run so far, with a 44.891 to run in fifth. Then the top of the THR cars is Jesper Tolborg, 
on a 44.899. And those six drivers are the only ones in the 44s at the moment. The next driver down is Tom Ely on a 45.028. And then Toby Davis on a 45.1. Uh, with Darren Adams and Gary Denham rounding out the top 10. Chris Butch is down in 11th so far. If we rotate through the standings see some of the other guys through here. Ryan Callan down in 17th down a 46.001. And then looking through some of the other drivers that we've got on the grid here too as well. As we wind through and get to show you what's got, exactly what's going on uh, on track here. So what about the Pochdown circuit? As we see a lot of dust being kicked up here. Well the Pochdown circuit itself, looking at what it is, it was built back in 1975. It was... Uh, on what the side of old runways at the airport Lawaka through the cooperation of the Ville Kopolska Automobile and Agricultural Car Factory Polmo in Poznan, which is the car manufacturer brand Tarpan, apparently. Um, it, the track was, it was officially a car motorcycle track and it was opened on December 1st, 1977, and the, the karting track, which was installed on, three years later on uh, 1980. It was in the, on the track, we've had many drivers race, including Robert Kubica, Michael Schumacher, and Jackie Stewart. I believe the unofficial, the unofficial lap record in this, this car on this circuit as a whole is uh, 1 minute 14 seconds set by Mark Genet in a Ferrari F1 car in 2007. So we've got some pretty decent uh, history to it here. And also, what's, what's fantastic is that uh, League Admin, of course, one of the drivers in the league uh, in this series, Ryan Callan, he has very kindly been able to convert the R Factor 2 version of Poznan for use here in the league in... in the Tom Wanslow Cold Clear, Clear Series on our Factor 1. And I have to say, it looks absolutely stunning and fantastic. So congratulations and well done to Ryan on a superb job for putting this uh, updated version of the circuit together. So, I've been talking to a few of the drivers and one of the key things they've been talking about here is that uh, tyre wear is going to be a lot more crucial than it was expected to be back in Thruxton. Uh, that's the reason because if you look at a track map of this circuit, there are quite a few long corners, very fast corners, but the, the, the radius is very much a sharper radius so it's it, they, they are they're a lot long corners but they're tighter than they, they would be in places such as Thruxton where they're very long fast sections of the course so we're going to be seeing here lots of trouble with tyres I know both THR and Precision have been struggling with tyre wear and really uh, really have been saying to me that the the tyres are really going to eat themselves up throughout this race here but uh, we're watching currently Jack Keith as he heads across the line here and uh, if he's going to start on a lap time yes he is so we're going to hold with him at the moment uh, but Precision really looking really looking strong here. Uh, Toby Davis, of course, running champion. A little bit surprised he's down in eighth, but he hasn't had too much time to test. Um, what is great, though, is seeing Alexander Larritsen, who, to be fair, he's always been the kind of the driver so far in the series who hasn't really ultimately matched the pace compared to the other guys up at the front, like Keith and Kilov and or even John Monroe as well. But Larritsen really showing his true colours right now as uh, Keith's current lap puts him a tenth and a half down in the first sector kicks a bit of dust on the outside too um, but uh, it's great to see Alex, Alex pick up some pace here he's definitely been putting in the laps and trying to improve and yeah, it looks as though Posh does a circuit that he favours and hopefully he will put on a great spectacle as will all the guys here hopefully do that also something we wanted to try and announce here of course is that uh, well this race and also Autodrom in Most in a couple of weeks time this is going to be the current clear that we're using it's going to be its swan song because we are going to be moving on to the brand new 2013 clear which was uh, unveiled uh, on the TPS uh, forums uh, inside simracing.tv of course you can also check it I believe on the Facebook and Twitter pages that's Twitter at Turing underscore pro and Facebook.com forward slash Turing Pro series you can see a picture of the brand new 2013 Clio this is the brand new cup car which they're going to be using for in real life uh, next year I'm not sure if they're using it this year I know for a fact that uh, the UK Clio Cup still uses the current generation Clios uh, the, the last generation players, if you like, for, for this season. I know they're switching for next season. We're making the switch early for the last seven rounds. So that'll be the last four rounds. That'll be we're going to be going from Croft onwards all the way through to the season finale at Knock Hill on these br with these brand new players. They're turbocharged. Uh, they've got slightly upgraded suspension, and uh, they are awesome looking. They're a fantastic piece of styling, and they look really, really smart. So I really hope you guys will enjoy them. DHR have even managed to put together uh, some liveries and started to paint their cars already. They've taken, if you like, delivery of their new Clios. So hopefully we'll see some fantastic efforts going on by the by. So the practice clock has ticked to zero, so we're going to get ready for qualifying in just a second. And just if you guys are unaware of exactly how the process works, it is a simple five to ten minute session, and all the cars get exactly one single flying lap. They can go up whenever they like. 
No restrictions, but they have to, they get one single flying lap and they cannot get another chance at it. It is their one opportunity to try and set pole position. It's a 10-minute session, and I've got a few cars trying to almost jump the gun as we try to get ourselves towards the end of the pit lane here. So Alexander Larrison finished that session top from Keithley second. Keelov third and Monroe fourth. And you can already see, look, we've got a car that's heading down pit road, and that is Toby Davis. And Davis has done this before. We saw him do it in the past couple of seasons. But a couple of the races at Rockingham and then at Thruxton. He always likes to be out first because he wants to try and get that bank lap in and set that benchmark that he wants all the other guys to try and aim for. He wants to get it out of the way early. Now, of course, the disadvantage of that is, is the fact that when you, of course, yes, we have practice and yes, the track is slightly rubbered in, but the precision guys like to wait until near the end. Near the end, we had a few more guys go out. They may be able to judge their form, judge how they're getting on with the circuit. Then they start to strike and plan their kind of runs through. There's no real places where you can get team running and team slipstreaming like we saw in Thruxton with the, with the drafts down the back straight and the drafts all around the back of the circuit. There are a couple of long straights, including the pit straight, in fact. So there is a possibility that for that to happen down that one section of track. But uh, apart from that, really, uh, it's all down to own driver skill not being able to gain the toe. As you can see, Tom Eady just putting himself in front of Toby Davis as they head through the Kirk corner. And as far as I can see, other cars you can, you've got going out. Well, if you look at the standings, uh, the boxes we've got here for the, for the positions. If, if the number, if the, the box is light, is light, there is lit up, if you like, and that means that that car is out on track. If it's darker, that means that they're back in the pit. So looking at the cars that we've got on track then, we currently have Tom Ely, Toby Davis, Darren Adams, Luca Pecklaz, Pipo Rodriguez, uh, Ryan Callan, Scott Sovic, Nick Hughes, Robert Powell, and Jonathan Osserklin are all out on track right now to see exactly what they can do to try and stake their claim for pole position in this first of two races here tonight at Poznan, which is, of course, round five of the 2013 Touring Pro Series Tom Onzo Cole Clio Series. Now, something I, do, I forgot to mention, um, well, I mentioned no one heard because I had TeamSpeak meeting last time out, and I apologise for that, uh, is the fact that Tom Onzo Cole... Obviously, you guys will have seen it last time out we saw the BTC, BTCC at Thruxton. It was a fantastic effort from Tom Onslow Cole and everyone at Team Hard. They made some fantastic results. They scored third in the first race, second in the second, and fourth in the third. And watching Toby Davis, they're very ragged through turn one. That rear end was really slightly. I'm not sure if he yanked the handbrake to try and bring the back end around to try and point that, the front of that Clio towards the apex a bit better. But let's see exactly what he comes up with in this first sector. He heads up towards at turn number four, and nothing's come through just yet. So he's, of course, going to set the benchmark, as is, of course, Tom Eady in front. None of the top six from practice have gone out just yet. So we've yet to see any of them jump. I think Kevin Enderman's also out on track, also Jimmy Hughes, and, and that's and Eric Strahan is also out there too. So none of, the, none of the, the guys who were the quickest in the session are going to try and do this now. So Toby Davis hasn't had too much practice uh, as we said, since, but uh, he's still hopeful that he can try and keep himself in the championship hunt. He is third in the standings, pushing on behind both Jack Keithy and Simon Kilov, and he brings the car now onto this little back section and then round this long kind of right hand up. And we have some fantastic, just looking back to Poznan last year, we had two fantastic races. We actually saw Gary Lennon, who's one of the more elder statesmen in the uh, TPS, actually take his first two victories in TPS history here last season in Poznan. As we now watch Toby Davis bring his THR Orange Clio down the back straight. I can see John Monroe has also exited pit lane, so he will now be on for an outlap soon. Tom Ely, of course, is now going to come across the line first. And he will be the first man to set a time across the line. So his benchmark for everyone else is going to be 145.065. Not as quick as anyone else was expecting. And Davis only at 145.2. Well, it's a, well, I say only, but that's not too bad. I've, uh, the, 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 the top times were, 140, were into the 144s, as Pipo Rodriguez now puts himself into third with the 145.736, and Darren Adams trumps that with a 145.4. Uh, looking at John Monroe, here he is. He's on an outlap so far. And John seems to really settle in nicely with precision. He seems to have almost found a home, if you like. And this is what, I've been talking about this a lot with uh, people on other broadcasts. It's, just, it's finding a home with a team that you really enjoy and these top teams that really can help you out. As uh, Ryan Callan, excellent job from him. Just to grab a 45-3 to put himself provisionally third on the grid. Oscar Clint goes seventh on a 146-780. Only eight cars out as Alexander Larrison and Jack Keithy are also out on track. As he gets for Tolborg and Chris Butcher. Jimmy Hughes is flying in the first sector so we might see if we can quickly pick him up. 
Uh, apologies for flicking through. I have to try and pick Jimmy Hughes up. There he is. A few more times coming through. Nick Hughes is down there too as well. Who else has gone in? I think Robert Powell has. Ossiclip is going well as well, but I think that lap's not going to count because he's already set the time. But Munro is going to be the next of the big guns, as far as I can see. It's going to be setting his time. As we're now watching Jimmy Hughes, and I think, is that, is that, John, is that John Munro behind there? I don't think it is. But we're going to try and just flick through again. I apologise for flicking through. There's no way for me to actually get to the, the drivers in the middle of the pack any easier than flicking through like that. I know it doesn't look fantastic, but unfortunately it's what we have to deal with. But nine, nine cars with times on the board. And it's Tommy Lee currently provisional pole on a 145.065. Enderman and Strahan have popped themselves in 146.9 and 145.9 respectively for Enderman and Strahan to put them fifth. 10th and 6th respectively, and John Monroe's flying already up, look at that, by a t uh, just over a 10th in the first sector, so this is a man who really is trying to put his mark down for pole position for race 1, he could do with it because of course all the kind of training now, all the kind of input that he's had now from Precision Motorsports would really come to fruition if he can reward them now with a top spot on the top, spot at the top of the grid for the first race then, down towards heavy braking area. Uh, through this corner here. This circuit actually has 14 turns. I think it was down towards turn 6. Now through turns 7, 8, he'll wind his way through. And uh, it's a fantastic circuit, this. It's a wonderful technical track, as we said. Fairly long corners, and uh, but it's always winding so that you, you can always get a nice flow to it, if, if possible, as you look. And yes, the Tolbog's also flying. So Monroe's lost a tenth and a bit in that first set, in that second set. The Keith is also flying too, as well. He's just over a tenth up to, as well. So also Chris Butcher's flying too, so there's a lot of cars we're going to try and keep track of here and see exactly where they are on track. So, uh, for me, it looks as though I think the best band to look at is going to be John Monroe, because he'll be the first man across the line. Now, he, of course, he's down. A lot, more, lot, lot of guys going purples in sector one and two. Tolbog's in with the next man across the line. So here comes John Monroe then, first the Precision Boys to set a lap time. Where will he pop himself? Across the line he goes, and the young Scotsman puts himself into second. That's a 145-180, not as quick as he managed in practice. So we'll have to wait and see exactly where that's, what kind of opportunity he can bring himself. Uh, again, I'm going to try and quickly pick up if I can. Yes, for Talbor. Yes, here he is. So if we down the times, and Keith is really flying. He's up by almost a quarter of a second. This could be a really hot time he's going to put in here. Here comes Talbor then in the second THR orange machine. Most winningest driver in TPS. And where can he put himself on the grid? Provisional pole, 145.057 to go top of the times, but the man we're going to be looking at, of course, he's undoubtedly going to be Jack Keithley. If we can find him here through the times, where is Keithley? He is 20th here, and James Cahagan goes to 146.4. So, championship leader then, Jack Keithley across the line he comes then. Will it be a provisional pole for the precision driver? Over the line he goes, and it is a 144.779. That is by considerable margin, by two and three quarter tenths, so let's say almost three tenths, but he goes fastest. Still a few cars to come through then, including, I believe, also Alexander Larratson, who, where's he gone into? He's gone to pole. So Alexander Larratson pops himself top. Look at that. Almost 400 quicker. So it's an all precision front row at the moment with Talborg and Ely on row two. And then Rowan Davis on row three. Callum's also popped himself into seventh on his first race back for a while. But Simon Kilov is also flying too. He is in 23rd on the standings, but he is now right on his lap at this moment in time and he flicks it through this very hard. You've got to watch those anti-cuts that are huge, kind of, almost like disparate bollards. And look at how much time he's found. He is up by almost three-tenths of a second in the second sector. This is going to be an absolute barnstorming uh, effort here from the young Dane. Of course, he's a Carter in real life. He's second in the championship. He's, he's had three wins. He, well, he and Davis share three wins of pizza, the most winningest drivers in the championship so far. Only other driver to win a race was taught was Jack Keithley, and that was the first two rounds in... No, no it wasn't. It was the, the races in Verano, rounds three and... Uh, the races in Verano at round two. But the red Simon Keel's going, this is going to be pole for him then. So is it going to be a one, two, three precision? The answer to that question is... Yes, it is. 144.661. Loses quite a bit of time in that final sector, but it's still good enough to get him up there. And excellent stuff. And Florian Strauss has also popped himself into 8th place on a 145.284. Now, let's see how many more cars we've got left to go. We've still got another 6 cars to set times. We've got Gary Lennon and Tobias Olsen's done a 46.925. Uh, 
And also we've got Gary Lennon's gone to 13th on a 45.8. So we've still got a few more cars to come across the line. Thomas Matsuski is that Matt is the, one, one of the cars which I think we have to watch for because he's now, uh, of course, he's been really finding some pace. So I saw he's quite fairly quick in the practice sessions. But this is the THR Blue Man, Matuszewski across the line. And he go, in fact, he's starting his lap now. So what we'll do, we'll go on board now with Matt Matuszewski. And we're out that with him. So into turn one, very long, almost 180 degree corner here. You have to really just run the inside curb it, just clip it a little bit and run it over, just to make sure that you're using all the track and a bit more. Now you run towards this very fast S of uh, th two and three. It's easy flat, not too much trouble, and down towards the break is then the end of the first sector of turn four. It's almost a double apex left-hander, and that's not too bad. He's only down by three hundredths of a second. So the round turn three, turn four, excuse me, now into turn five. Almost a 90 degree corner, but it's very long indeed. And then up towards now who turns six, and a long right hand there, and then sweeping up towards turn seven, which is a little, this is a straight here, and you break almost downhill. That's a very, very tight corner here. In fact, turn seven is a very key corner as well, uh, because you have to watch, because it's slightly banked, and uh, if you mess up the corner there, and also the first corner, but those are key corners on the circuit that could potentially ruin a lap. So Mazeski has lost time in the second sector. He's down by just over six tenths. So at this rate, looking at the time, six tenths is going to put him roughly round about somewhere in the top ten. And I would probably guess it's going to put him somewhere around around at the bottom. So that's round about where Toby Davis and Florian Strauss is. They're roughly about seventh or eighth. Now, unless he loses more time in his final sector, as he runs down this back straight towards the final corner, that long right-hander turn, turn 14 takes you back onto the pit straight. He's going to slip outside the top 10. Currently, the bubble in the top 10 is down at Adams on a 45-4. So if he can manage quicker than that, he'll be absolutely fine. But across the line he comes then, to the one of the final cards instead of time, and the answer to it is he goes 11th, so he just misses out, 45-5-0-3. Bit of a delta there between him and 11th, and Chris Butcher in 12th, 45-7. So a huge spread of times there. So the top ten is, is sit corrected by about eight tenths of a second, and the whole field by about. And let's see now. That's about 2.7 seconds. So that's not too bad. That's a fairly decent, a very competitive uh, opening uh, of the uh, Grid One race for tonight. That's a fairly good spread then. 2.7 seconds is pretty competitive, and it's not too bad. You see, the track temperature is constantly going up, so uh, it's always going to be hectic on tyres as well as the nature of the circuit. So what we're going to do here is we'll quickly come back to the grid in a moment as we're going to warm up. What we're going to quickly do is run a few sponsors, and we'll be back in two minutes. So sit tight, and we'll be back soon. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. And welcome back to Poznan for round five of the 2013 Touring Pro Series Tom and Cole Clio Series. Uh, two and a half minutes left in warm up, so we're going to quickly cycle through the grid to show you how they're going to line up for race one then. And it's a precision lockout on the first three positions. It's Simon Kilov on pole position with a 44.6, with Alexander Lauritsen with I think one of his best qualifyings of the season. 
season in with a 44-7. Just ahead of Keithley on a 44-779. Yes, Talwog is fourth on a 45-0. So the top three, the only guys on the, in the 44s in this qualifying session. Tommy is going to start on row three in fifth, alongside John Monroe in the fourth position car. Seventh, Toby Davis. Got to be disappointed with that. Only seventh, the reigning champion, is going to want to do better than that. And Florian Strauss, great effort from him too. Eighth place on the grid, he'll start on row four. Ryan Callum, welcome back to, the, to grid one, and what a way to come back to it. Ninth place on the grid, 45-3, and Darren Adams running out the top ten on the grid with a 45-4. Then Matanzewski and Chris Butcher will start on row six for an all-THR sixth row. Pipa Rodriguez for GT Competizione and Thomas Jacobs for the sixth axis on row seven. Row eight is going to be Gary Lennon for Ice Cold and Jay Adji for THR. Eric Strana and uh, Scott Servic on row number nine. Row ten will be Simon Shepard for Core and Robert Powell for Core two. On row eleven is going to be another Core car, Heinz Petzold and Jimmy Hughes for Walk Racing. And all Essex Online Racing twelfth uh, row, and that's going to be Tom Novi and James Gahagan. Row thirteen is going to be Matt Richards and John Osterklint. Row 14, Kevin Enderman and Tobias Olsen. And then Nick Hughes and Ben Richards on row number 15. And rounding out the back of the grid, as we saw, if we switch down to where you can see the last man on the grid there, it's going to be Luca Peklash in the core car. So we've actually got a 31-car grid that's going to be starting for today's race. So, moving on to what's going to be happening today then. Well, of course, we have a fantastic lineup of racing in store for you guys. And hopefully you guys hit first are going to enjoy it because... We are already looking forward to exactly how these races are going to pan out, and hopefully we're going to be at some great stuff, and I'm almost babbling here because we've got about 30 seconds left to go. Looking at the grid then, and looking as we cycle through a little bit and watching uh, as to what's going on here. So, Kilov has had, had some pretty, pretty, pretty decent qualifying form. Toby Davis, it seems as though THRs of the, their fight back, which they were staging in the past couple of races, where they were starting to take the fight, the Precision Boys, it's starting just to wear off a little bit, as in it, it's not doing as well as they were hoping it would have been. Of course, they came back and they won, and Toby Davis won both races in Rockingham. And of course, Kilov, as we said, and Davis took a win apiece last time out in Thruxton. So, really at the moment, it seems to be Kilov and Davis are kind of spearheading the attacks for in the, in the ongoing war in TPS between THR and Precision. And they always seem, we seem to be battling everywhere. Um, they seem to be battling in the Viet Super, virtual Viet Supercars that they did last time out in Adelaide. Um, not so much, I don't think, in the minis. I haven't seen too much of the mini race. Of course, they had the event last time out. They don't believe uh, there was too much battling going on. It seems to be that Kim College is the mini where it appears to be that Davis is. But we'll have to wait and see for that one. And until then, we are now going into the race session then. So we've got ourselves a th about 30 seconds until we get ourselves onto the grid. And uh, really hoping that we're going to get some great racing from these guys as they always produce. Um, and hopefully you guys are looking forward to the new Clios coming in, the new 2013 cars. As you said, they're turbocharged, uh, better up brake suspension, better gearbox on them as well. Uh, some of the drivers have found that they've already had a, a test of them, and they quite like them, and quite like how they feel. So, uh, as the cars head off onto their formation, that track and air temperature are both at 27 degrees. And, uh, of course, precision. Pretty hard to look past them for a victory, doesn't it? Kilo, Larison and Keithy at the top of the field with Monroe in support in 6th place, so this is going to be a, cl a close one to call for me. Uh, I think that we have some really I think we're going to have a really good battle once again between THR and Precision. Uh, any cars in that could cause an upset? Well, provided he has a good day, Florian Strauss in 8th always seems to surprise and always put something in there, and also never count out Ryan Callan either. He's going to be absolutely eager, he's going to be chomping at the bit to get himself a decent result in his first race back in the uh, in Division 1 here, and I'm sure that uh, if he gets a clear run at a, 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 a few of overtaking opportunities, he will take them. Uh, also, what's great is uh, the core racing cars have some fantastic looking new liveries. Uh, there's one there by Darren Adams, a few different uh, uh, colour schemes here as we look through and just rotate through the standings here. So exactly the rest of the grid as we run through. Uh, one driver that I noticed isn't here is, is in fact, Robert Wiesemann is not here. So that's going to be quite interesting. It's interesting to see how THR get with a couple of get on with a couple of cars down. Of course, THR of course got a lot of cars representative. They've got cars from THR blue, uh, purple, orange, and, gr and red are all here. No THR green cars, I believe, from what I can see. But uh, as I said, a 31 car grid, and they're all eager to get away, as I'm sure. And we're just watching here to see exactly how they come through. 
and then wind their way once again. Of course, tyre wear, is, as we said, is going to be a key factor here. And uh, it always seems to be in these cars. The one who can make his tyres, the one who can look after his tyres the best near towards the end of the race. There's a breakaway pack of about five or six cars. I think we're going to expect that. So, as the last few cars coming through, we've got two 15 lap races here. So this is going to be the first one, obviously. And, uh, oops, standings have gone back from the grid, so field, so we're going to keep track of that one. How exactly is this dynamic position going to work here now on this circuit? They, have, they, they, they even said that they've especially been struggling with the t with tyre problems, as are probably a lot of teams, as of course with THR. So it all comes down to this. It all comes down to the prize at the end of this long struggle, of this 10-round ten ten championship. We still, remember, we've still got runs in the second half of the season. Most, and then the the what? It's the four pack of British races back in the British Isles at Croft, and then once again heading to heading to Silverstone, and then Snetterton, and then the season finale, as we said, back at Knock Hill. So Simon Kilov and Alexander Larrison park their two Precision Motorsport Clios on the front of the grid, and there, of course, there is Jack Keithley waiting in anticipation. We're going to watch here from this grid here. This is a great view of the front six rows, and as we watch on. The last few cars are hopefully going to come onto the grid and be all set for our first race of 15 laps then. Here we go. It is round four of the 2013, round five of the 2013 Thomas Le Conclear Series. First round of Poznan. Revs are up. Revs are out and away we go. Great start this time from Larris. He's jumped Kilo off the line and Kilo keeps almost going to go with him. And I think also a great start from Tarbol because they charge down towards the first corner for the very first time. Looks like Callan's held on to ninth place. It's side by side. Looks like as Butcher trying to move up past Dan Adams behind as the precision cars of Kilo and keep to go side by side through turn one. And it is going to be Larrison that leads out the first corner down towards turns two, three, and four. And it is the precision one, two, three. Powerball has four. And Rose up to fifth already, upper spot. And, all, and, the, and we've also got Toby Day. This is up and down to seventh already as they charge into turn four. This is a really tight corner if you watch back. And is there any shenanigans that through there? I don't think so. They all seem to have got through pretty cleanly. Not too many position changes. But it is, look at that. In fact, Monroe's got past Talborg and it's now position, position at 1, 2, 3, 4. So the quartet are starting to string away as we speak. And also the two TH Orange cars are up there because Ely has let Davis go. And it's TH Orange versus Precision as they tuck down towards turn number 7 for the first 15 times here. So into turns 8 and 9 then, it's Larrettson, Keithley, Keelov and Monroe. The Precision Quartet, the Precision Procession, as we like to call it. Just trying to extend their advantage on the opening laps here. But, Talborg and Davis will not let them get it that easy. And just behind we've got a great scrap going on here. This is Strauss up the inside for 7th place. There's a bit of dust being kicked up here by a couple of the cars in front. The Strauss is defending hard now for Tommy Ely. Ely trying to give them a note as they head through the complex down towards the back straight off of turn 13 and towards turn 14 for the first time. Looking back in, I think we can look back now. That is Florian Strauss. There is car 69. That is Tommy Ely then also looking back behind. That's Thomas Mazewski, Mazewski in the THR blue car as they, as they hop their way over the curve and onto the straight for the first time now. Across the line they go and Larrettson leads by 0.4 of a second from Kilov in third. Then Monroe in fourth, then it's Talbot, Davis, Strauss, Ely, Callan and Matt Matazewski. And there's a great battle again, it's going on between Strauss. There's more contact, there's more shenanigans, and Callan's major he's sideways. Oh, how did he catch that? He put his foot right on the throttle, keep it there. Matazewski giving him the big hip and shoulder on the exit. And the many best thing from all of that was down home saying, thank you very much, boys, scrap box yourselves, I'm gone. But now Callan's not going to give it up too easy, as they're battling once more ahead, that's all stuff. Strauss Manini trying to look up his inside. There goes Callan back up the inside into ninth place. Darren Adams back down to 10th. The Madazeski gets shuffled out of the top 10 and the process in, and in the process from that one. Fantastic scrap from the lower run to the top 10. It's only that two. So, Keithy just closing a little bit. The gap was 0.4 across the line. It's now 0.2. And they're still batting now. Look at this. Callum defending from Adams. As we go on board now, this is weird. Adam, is, is he side by side? He is side by side with Callan. So the team game board car is having to fend off the core race of the Nova, the Nova machine. And Matt Dusky just waiting there, waiting for the opportunity, waiting to pounce it. He knows what's going on. Huge plumes of dust being kicked up here. They're really using all the track and so much more as they head on to the fantastic complex here near the, end of, near the end of the lap. And we saw some great driving here. Callan's wide over the grass. That shows how hard he's trying. I think he, I think he in that carpet saying, I'd like more racetrack, please, so I've run out of it. And 
means that if he wants more trackers, he'll have to get the bitumen out himself to try and pave it. And Cullen's weaving this way and weaving that, trying to distract Adams and trying to just put him off his line in the hope that he doesn't get past. So behind that's a move, I think, is that. That's Lennon trying to get up the inside of Thomas Jacobs. And to head on to the straight once again then. So looking back now from Thomas Jacobs, there's Gary Lennon. He was the, he, he's the reigning winner here, of course, from 12 months ago. He won both races here. He's going to try and dive it up the inside. This is for 12th place, 11th place. But Jacobs is wise to it. And in front, what's up going on here? And that is now Callum once again taking the wider line through turn one. And he's now still fending off Adams. And Matazeski is also caught up on this one. Down towards turn four. Matazeski looking up the inside of Dan Adams in turn four. But the core racing driver holds the inside line. He, put, he just pulls in front and just stops back in front and coolly holds on to the plate. Great scraps going on here. But then looking back over the front, and as expected, the four precision cars are starting to streak away a little bit now from the two THR orange cars and for that, but both Talborg, that Davis and Talborg have now switched places. They were, Talborg was in fifth, but he's now given the place up to his the teammate who's higher up in the championship and of course the reigning champion. And he's now fifth, and those two are also bringing along Florian Strauss and the THR purple car of Tom Ely with them as they head out towards this, the little complex again here of turns 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 and I wonder if there's going to be any switch of positions once again because Larrettson was the man that got the better start and he's holding on and this is a pretty tricky section to get to get your braking wrong here as they sweep through once again they're going to go under the bridge and already the gap between the, the, the four position cars as a whole and the next car in fifth place is 2.6 seconds that's the gap between Larrettson your race leader who's the, the car at the forefront of this queue of of yellow and grey grey Cleos and I wonder here if Keithy going to have a chance to pounce here looking up the inside here comes Jack Keithy will he be able to have, to have a look at his teammate Alexander Larrison but no he ducks back inside and waits for a better opportunity but this has now allowed Keelov to close off the red bumper of the Englishman and uh, Keithy of course is the champion of the American Touring Car Championship and also I believe he is also a virtual mini champion as well apologies if that is incorrect I'm trying to go off my memory from it's trying to serve me here look we've got battles going on here this is Strauss attacking Talbot down towards turn four trying to go around the outside the 360 top of the try and find his way around the outside but Talbot holds on he holds the inside line and says come on son you're going to definitely be there than that if you want to take this place from me and Strauss says okay then I'll go around the outside of turn five wonderful pass from Florian Strauss he, he, saw, he saw the gauntlet and thought challenge accepted I'm going to get past you whether you like it or not and that's exactly what's just happened and now here comes Tommy trying to get stuff into the mix up the inside of Talbot contact with the back of Florian Strauss's car. Strauss is slightly sideways, but he holds on now for the moment for sixth place. If you look at the rest, the rest of the standings, exactly where everyone else and Chris Butcher's out of the race. I didn't see that at some point, but we've lost a THR red car. That is rather unfortunate. So THR are down one car in their attack. As behind, we've still got the ragged battling going on between Ryan Callan. There he is, and that's clashing the curb as he goes through turns nine and ten. And uh, still, still in turn out is now Matizeski, who's got past Darren Adams in the process. He's now up to 10. And Talbot, oh, Strauss in the wall! Florian Strauss in the 360 racing clear is into the barriers. And how did that happen at all? We're going to have to look at a replay. Here it is. Now let's see, he was sideways through turn 10. And was there contact with Ely? There w I think there was. Or did he clip the curb? Oh, I think there was a touch. No, both cars were in the wall. Ely was in the wall and... Now then, looking back, was the con yes, there was contact. Ely just missed Justy's braking, just nosed the back of Strauss's car, both which hit careering into the tyres, and I fear that could be the end of their race for both of them. Well, this is still the replay, so Strauss got going again. Ely's still st stuck in the gravel, but he's now got the, he's got the headlights on to try and get the car going again. And uh, that's rather unfortunate. So, well, there's, there is Florian Strauss. This is live pictures. We've managed to limp back to the pits, and that car's looking very worse away. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if he's out of the race. And there's Tommy, of course, I think his car's out too. And that is a shame. We've lost two big contenders already. Back at the front, it's still going on between these three cars. And oh, and Kilov almost that breaks himself into turn seven. People have said that's a key corner. If you lose it there, that's going to ruin the whole lap that you're on. But also, remember. All this is benefit of the cars behind the course's battle, battle between this lot. And this means now that Ryan Callum finds himself in 7th place. Malazeski jumps up to 8. Darren Adams is now ninth, And Gary Lennon's up into the top 10 here. So this is quite great. He'll find himself some decent points heading to 
towards the second race now. Looking back from Larrick's as they head through turn 12 and 13 here. And heading on towards turn 14. So there's Keithy directly behind. Behind him is Keeler. They're just, just starting out there, the young, young Dane, second in the championship. First and second in the championship are following each other line of stern there. And just in the background, the fourth, John, the fourth car is John Monroe. Now he is eligible for driver's points in terms of, uh, in terms of himself, but, he, but because he joined Precision from Ice Cold in the middle of the season, he's not eligible to score team points for Precision. But he, but he can still run in a precision car. So that's going to be key. But look at this scrap going on here. And what's actually happened is that Matazeski has got up to seventh place. That car's not going to give it up an inch. Looking back now from the THR Blue Machine, there is the Gamefold car. What a fantastic looking car it is. That's one of the best looking cars in the, in the field of I do so serve myself. Car number 68. Here comes Ryan Callan to the outside looking to try and get it past the turn four. Will he go deep on the brake? Has he left, has he left the door open? Because here comes the double pronged attack from Gary Levin and Darren Adams they're now side by side and looks like Callan's just held on for now but he's got more pressing issues because he's trying to get past Matazeski and they're all stacking up behind look because behind them you've got Thomas Jacobs in 11th place Jay Adji in 12th in the second DHL blue car and Jimmy Hughes in the walk racing car as Lennon darts out has a look on the inside of Aaron Adams but Adams covers the inside line well and holds the pace no he doesn't because Lennon just forces his way through and says come on so you have to do better than that he just didn't put up as much of a fight as he could have done. And now, is that, is that, that, that Callum on the inside? How much, how much leverage does Callum want to give us to do the corners? Like he's almost pushing him physically himself. And Callum again, just gluing his game point clear to the rear bumper of a THR blue car. Kicking up dust as they go. And Lennon now really on a charge. He's caught up right. Look at the race he's caught up off the back of Callum's car. And they all head out again. And look at the shenanigans behind here. Look, look at this. JIG 11 and Thomas Jacobs in 12. Jimmy Hughes also getting involved as well. Looking back through some of the other uh, ratings here. Also, we've lost Matt Richards. Florian Strauss has carried on after that incident with Tom Ely. And uh, so we've lost three cars as Jimmy Hughes is very wide on the exit of that corner. We're looking back here towards the front. And let's see exactly what's coming here on board there with Ryan Callan. Looking up the inside of turn one. Madzeski left a bit of a gap. Comes to try and make it bigger. But Matazeski holds him again, he's defending it well. <laughs> he's practically inside Matazeski's car. That's exactly just how hard that car's pushing, literally physically pushing him, and pushing in terms of how much space he's got all over the back of the GHR car. And he left the door open. Not just, he's not left it open that much. And, has, and Callum will have to try again. Down towards turn five, but now it's a catch 22 situation. Callum's got to attack Matazeski, but also look behind him because. Gary Lennon, the reigning champion here for Pogba, remember he won both races last year, his first, his first two ever THR races, a TPS race, excuse me, uh, he is really trying to get some more points, and he's right on the back bumper of Callan. So I wonder if there's going to be any kind of attack here in the process, but I'm pretty sure Callan's not bothered about that too much. What he is bothered about is trying to get Madazeski out of the way so he can try and chase after the two cars in front, and that is, of course, that is Talborg and Toby Davis in fifth and sixth sweep through this wonderful little complex here and Callum really giving he's giving it just give a big hurry up through this through the complex once again is he going to give him a nudge through here to give him more oh but well that's not going to help he clouds him right over the curb somehow the car was just just <laughs> get, getting all, all bumpy and bouncy over the curb there just kind of just clattering its way over and looking back now from Callum's car there is Gary Lennon that's the uh, the black white and blue car with the sole tire on top and I think that's Darren Adams also clouting the inside curve of the final corner so what we'll do is we'll keep track of this battle as it goes on and Lennon is just getting closer is he going to try and have a look at turn one? no because Callum's going to he, he can see, see that coming and he's going to hold the inside run just it a little bit wide from the inside curve but sometimes letting the car run through the middle through into the middle of the corner in the middle of the track in the corner sometimes it's the, it's, it's the faster run and look at Lennon he really is getting desperate to get past is he going to dive up the inside there's going to be contact little bit little bit of a nudge and Len Lennon's forced his way through so now Gary Lennon the Scotsman up to 8th place now Callum won't like that one bit he was feeling was nudge that he was pushed out of the way but that's how it goes in clears bit of bump and, bit of, uh, bump and barge what he expects from touring car star racing 
back up on the front there. Almost forgot about this lot. Lauritsen leading the charge for precision. Keithley second, Kielov third. On road just in the back, a little bit of dust being kicked up. And he's been caught by the two THR orange cars of Tarbork and Davis who have swapped positions again. I wonder if there's a bit of, there's a, there's something going on here. And it looks like to me Callum's also lost another place in the standings because he's down to 10. So what's going on here then? Because he's now, yes, in fact, there it is. There's that Amazon the core car. That's the black car with the stuff that's looking with the, 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 the Novo sponsorship on the side. It might be a bit difficult to tell the now the core and racing cars apart. Never mind about that because here comes Callum once again. Russell forces his nose up the inside, but Adams will not give way for the moment. But if anyone can try and find a way through, if anyone's great and aggressive driving trying to push their way through, it's Ryan Callan. And here he comes then. There's more dust. Because that's very extremely wide. I think Ryan Callan wants... I, th I think Ryan Callan should have tarmacked over every single path the racetrack here so he can just use it and get this more leverage because he seems to be finding bits of track where they don't seem to exist. But uh, that's, a, that's pretty intriguing. It's a battle going on behind as well. That's Jimmy Hughes and Thomas Jacobs giving a quick scroll the rest of the standing station is exactly what's going on down the field but then Callum once again attacking this time it's Darren Adams in that core, core racing car the black car with the blue band on the inside and what a dummy this could be up the inside of turn 4 he got some room look at the, look at the gap that Adams has left up the inside and there's more contact they bang doors and Callum has to stop back in behind Adams or is he because he's not going to try and force it over the kerb will that force Adams wide no not too much and Adams holds the place he holds the line Great racing here, just like Ryan Callan was ever away. He really is showing what he can do. He's up in the top ten, he's doing a fantastic job so far in his first race back. And we've also lost Tobias Olsen, so we've lost now four cars out of our 31 car grid. And how is that going to affect it? We're watching the battle for seventh, eighth, ninth and tenth. Madazeski in the THR blue car, then Gary Lennon in the ice cold racing car. Then Darren Adams in the core racing machine, and then Ryan Callan in the sole team game pod. The red car, number 68. There he is. Kind of soldier on here. We're on lap 9 of 15, so we're past the halfway point in this first race. Coming back to this lot here, and these guys are still not leaving each other alone. And this time, I wonder, is Keithy going to try a run here down the pit straight? It could possibly happen here. He's holding back, he's resisting. It's almost like he's bump drafting down the pit straight. Is he going to be able to make a pass or not? Or is he staying back because he's team leader? Well, Kilov's closed up. And I wonder, is this just team tactics, or are they just, are they just being, uh, are they being restrained? Because they're, t because they're all on the same team, because we're only at the halfway point of the championship? Well, you'd have to say so, and as a result, it is spoiling the race, because we're not seeing you guys battle up amongst each other. Although well, Keithy is just starting to the outside. But again, we saw him do this with Kilov in the second race at Thruxton, where he just, he moved out from behind the, his teammates in front, and then just came back behind in time to just slot behind in the braking zone. So, I wonder here if this is exactly the same tactic is being employed. Because if he closes, he's right on the bump. He, he, he could try and make a pass if he wanted to. But I think he's trying to set an example as team leader that he doesn't want to just go gung-ho and try and ruin the race, races of the, the drivers, other drivers in his team. They're all, of course, part of the same bracket. They're all part of the same stable of precision and they don't want to start taking each other out. The only time they will race, fit, race against each other out and out uh, uh, mano a mano is, is, is going to be when it seems it's clear that only two clear which precision drivers are going to be up there fighting for the championship and at the moment it looks to be it's going to be Keithley and Kilov with the battle also being uh, joined by Toby Davis now Toby himself is in sixth place just trying to chase after Jesper Talborg he hasn't done it too much the battle for 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th has calmed down a bit and there's been a change in positions at the front and that was Lauritsen has just let Jack Keithy by is he going to try again though? well he's coming, he's, he's, he's trying to come alongside here, has he got the straight line speed when he looks to the inside? Keithy's leaving the door open but is he going is, is to try and move though? is he smart enough? no he's, he he's, looks as though he's going to back out of it I don't think there's going to be any, major ch any more major changes, they don't want to take each other off and deny themselves from getting maximum points because Precision, Precision do want to try and take away the, the team's championship as quickly as possible and the performance they're putting in at the moment is a clear 1, 2, 3, 4 and Lauritsen creeps past again now was that just to let Keith to get a point for leading a lap? I don't believe that that exists in the Tom Wonsler Colquio series 
that's quite unusual, whether they're just playing about at the front and just having some fun amongst each other and trying to at least make the race a bit more <laughs> a bit more uh, interesting which <laughs> Munro does a wheelie with his clear in the background that's probably just the graphic glitch a little bit but still looks pretty fun so maybe we can try and look back and see exactly if we've got any close battles going on behind well the closest battle that I can see on the track let's see if we can flick through here and look for the back of the field going forwards well we're looking here there is Florian Strauss and his damage Cleo he's still going around in 27th place in a lap down. Back there's Jonathan Nosseklint and sweeping through. Here is a battle that's going on between Scott Serving Scott Serving and Pipe Rodriguez who has also lost the front of his car. Oh and here we go, here's a nice battle between the core teammates. This is Luca Pe this is Robert Powell in the yellow in the black and yellow car and Luca Peklaj in the black and red car. And these two are fighting over 18th place. And it seems as though the battle has been resolved pretty quickly. So that was short lived. But we've got some great shenanigans going on here. Because look at this, look at this, look at this scrap going on here. This is Jimmy Hughes leading the battle of ten. We've got now Thomas Jacobs, Mike Petzold in the black and green car. And then Eric Strana also throwing himself into the mix. This is fantastic. Eric Strana there, the another one, one of the ice car racing car drivers. And Jay Adji just at the back of that group in the THR blue car is also going to try and put himself into the mix. So 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th quick as you like, just like that, across the line. Uh, I don't think the gaps at the front are getting much busier. Well, the gaps are about two skiing, Lennon is getting shorter. As up the inside goes Petzold trying to move past Strana. In fact, they let Strana, I think, go around the outside, in fact. Strana's made up another place. He's charging up through the field to 13th. Next target is Thomas Jacobs. We'll go on board with him. Now then, the Jacobs is going to try and fancy a run at Jimmy Hughes as he forced him to outbreak himself. I think he has. Hughes leaves the door open, comes back across, but it's too late because Jimmy, but Thomas Jacobs is up into 11. But there's a slight nudge though. Is that going to unsettle Jacobs? Not quite. Oh, Estrada gives, Estrada gives uh, <laughs> Jimmy Hughes a big hip and shoulder in the left quarter. And just ahead, I think we've got about the seventh going on, seventh and eighth going between Matazewski and Lennon. We do indeed. So here we go. And also look at that in the background. Darren Adams has dropped back. He's dropped back, and he's now, well, he, no, Dan Adam, Adams has dropped Ryan Callan, I should say. And he's closing in on these two. There's Callan right in the background of the tent, in the blue and black car. Oh, and Matt's actually getting very sideways on the exit. Lennon, trying to force his way on the inside for this little spawn, but he's trying to get the switch back. Oh, what a wonderful foot move that was. That was a fantastic dummy he sold there. Lennon, he just, he dummied if he was going to go up the inside, forced Lennon to run deep, and he's given him the place. Or has it? Because how, how much lo how, how long is Lennon going to keep the place? Onto the pit straight to start lap number 13. And Lennon is charging in seventh place. Matazeski has the toe. On board with Lennon. And you can't see him because that's it. Where is Matazeski? There's Matazeski around the outside. And surely he's not got enough grip to make this pass stick around the outside. I don't think he has unless Lennon is full foul to a f uh, switch back of his own. And this time as he's trying, he's trying to force the gap as they go up towards the four. Side by side, down towards the left hand, the last of the late breakers, who's going to get the place? Lennon covers, has he been allowed to go too deep? I don't know, he's taking it wide. Last minute, and Mazzetti had a problem. And he's, he's locked up, he locked up majorly, and that's now dropped him behind Darren Adams. And into the clutches of Ryan Callan, who himself is now back down in 10th place, and could smell a chance of a couple more points. We're going to watch in anticipation here. You can see the gaps at the front. It's Larrett's leading by 0.3 of a second. Keelob is now up by, he's up behind by 0.7. And John Monroe is back by 3.4. The gap between Monroe and Talborg is getting coming down. It's now 0.7 of a second. So it's closing. It's getting smaller. But we'll keep an eye on that one. In fact, it's really close. Look at this. Talborg could upset the, the precision party here and force himself into a top five, into, into the top four. Currently all held by precision cars, Larrett and Keithy, Keelob and Monroe. But Monroe is struggling here and he did say to me before the race he was, had one or two pedal problems with his equipment. So he said, he said to me if he is off the pace and does fall back, that's the thing to blame it on. It's not because he's just he's, he, he's that slow. And of course John Monroe isn't a slow driver, he's a very quick young Scotsman and a very promising sim racing talent he's, and the fact that he's now with precision can only see his sim racing career get better into the penultimate lap then and 
Tarbord can sniff fourth place. There is blood in the water. And he's been closing, closing, closing. The gap's now four, was four tenths of a second. So it went across the line. De Toby Davis in the background can do nothing but watch on and hope that his teammate, the most winningest driver in TPS history with five TPS titles to his name, hoping that the Dane, the very quiet, the unspoken Dane, can force his way up into a top foot into, into the top four and break the precision deadlock at the front. Pelborg is almost like the TPS version of Kimi Raikkonen. Doesn't he, he, of course he's from Scandinavia, doesn't say much. Let's just drive into the talking. He's doing that now. He's trying to force one road to go defensive, very defensive, in fact, right to the inside of the track. And Talborg is putting the pressure on here, but it looks though for the moment Munro is resisting. I think he, he he's raced with Talborg many times before. He knows exactly who he's dealing with. But I'm sure Talborg will pull one or two tricks up his uh, 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 from his from under his sleeve. We'll see exactly what he's got left there as they head onto the latter part of the penultimate lap and they'll head start starting towards lap 15. And Talborg is right on the rear bumper now of Munro. And he might even get a chance, but oh, Talborg with a slight lock up there. You can see exactly just how hard he's pushing. He knows a chance of getting a fourth place is right in front of him, in his grasp. Now, this is a great opportunity here. If you can get, you can keep him the toe and keep it keep as close as possible through turn 14. This is the great best chance he's got now of running down the pit straight and pulling alongside and making a pass to turn one. Monroe immediately goes towards the pit wall to try and cover the inside line. Talbot goes with him to get the toe. Down towards turn one. Is there enough, is there enough room here? Talbot goes to the outside. Is he forcing a switch back? Is there enough room? Is there enough capability for that one? Monroe parks his car right on the inside to make sure Talbot has no chance. But here comes the run down towards turns two, three and four. Two and three are flat. Four to the right-hander. Tarbock squirming all over the back of Monroe's car, forcing his way up the inside, there's a bit of contact, almost, on the grass, Tarbock now to the outside, Monroe holding on this side by side, and Tarbock is trying around the outside, he's almost done it, they bang with, they bang doors again, oh wonderful stuff, and he's forcing, he's forcing Tarbock to go, Monroe to go deep, they're still side by side, and Toby's watching on thinking, come on Tarbock, you've got to make this happen, it has to happen now, and Talbot, more door, ba more door, door banging, more panel bashing, and Munro again holds on. At position one, two, three, four is still on the car. The one, two, three at least can happen, but can it be a perfect result for position in this first round of Poznan, or can Talbot change everything? Larrison still leads, Keithy still second, Kilov still third, but. We still watch that fourth place. Oh, and more contact. What a dummy. Monroe, Monroe Sarbe, he's on the grass. They're both in the gravel. And Davis is in the gravel in sympathy as well. Monroe keeps his foot in and Talbot's through. Davis trying to go around the outside and goes wide off the curb. He's run out of road and I think that might be it. We're going to watch for the moment. But for now, here comes the trio precision cars. And for, and for the first time in the Tom and Cole Clio series, it's going to be the first win of the season for Alexander Larrettson. He's in second. Kielov takes third. What about fourth? It's going to be yes for Talborg. I don't think Monroe will appreciate how he took it though. But Talborg's fourth. Monroe is fifth. Dewey Davis just holds on to sixth. Lennon finishing seventh for Ice Cold. Brilliant stuff for him. Darren Adams is eighth. And Matazeski pulled away from Callan in, in the final lap. So Matazeski gets ninth. Callan gets tenth on his return. And side by side, and that was all Strada just nipping 11th place to Thomas Jacobs. And was that a car in the background? That was a car in the background. Was that, uh, was, either that was lag, I wasn't, either that was some. Uh, couldn't quite catch that properly. Must have been someone running wide. Po apologies for that one. But the rest of the field coming through. Aji was, tw was 13th, Simon Shepard, Nick Hugh Jimmy Hughes, and then Nick Hughes. Heist Petzold, Robert Powell, Luca Peclage, Pipo Rodriguez, James Gahagan, and Scott Servick. A few more cars still coming through. But what a fantastic first race we had then. It was another THR domin uh, position, position domination with the top drive, with Jack Keithley scoring, with Larris and Keithley and Keith scoring a precision lockout on the podium. Yes, but Talborg is fourth. I'm not sure the stewards will, will smile on the, fact, on, the way, on the way that he managed to take the place. Talborg will probably argue that Monroe left him no room. Monroe will say it was probably too, too aggressive. But still, there it is. Talborg fourth, Monroe fifth. Toby Davis holding on to sixth. Gary Lennon also grabbing 7th, Darren Adams was 8th, Thomas Matazewski was ninth, and Ryan Callan rounds up the top 10 for this first race, first race. So that is the end of the first race, stay tuned, we've got another 15 laps coming up with a qualifying session for that race first coming up. 
So stay tuned, let's, let's run some adverts and we'll come back when we get to practice. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim Racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. And welcome back everybody to round 5 of the 2013 Touring Pro Series Taiwan's Local Clio Series at Poznan. Uh, what we're going to qu quickly do here is I've had one or two technical issues whilst playing the adverts. Uh, so I'm going to quickly just see if I can get myself back into the server for you guys. Uh, apologies for that. Um, just something that came up unexpectedly here. So I'm going to try and hopefully uh, get ourselves back onto the server if we can. Uh, but what a fantastic first race we had. It was a precision 1-2-3 lockout on the podium. Alexander Larison taking his first win of the season from Jack Keithley and Simon Keelhoff. Some last lap antics on both Jesper Talborg and John Munro, with Toby Davis also watching on from behind. And he also went off in sympathy, as those guys did as well. 
plenty of action to digest as we go through. Now, what, now I'm just trying to get myself back onto the server so we can at least get you some uh, some action of what action of what's going on uh, with the Clios. And hopefully we can do that uh, if I can find how to get on onto the server. So I apologize if I ramble a little bit here. Uh, whilst we're quickly doing that, if you are watching, uh, whilst we're waiting, in fact, I can quickly update you again of what's coming up for the next few races. Uh, of course, next race coming up, the next broadcast is going to be the next round of the Virtual Viet Supercast 2013. It's the first of two North American stops, and it's the only uh, the race in uh, America, and it's going to be the run, race at, run at Watkins Glen. That's going to be at 5.15 GMT or 6.15 UK time run this Saturday, the 25th of May. And then the next event after that is going to be the season finale for the Virtual Mini Challenge the, in mid-Ohio. And hopefully that will be a fantastic run as well. That's going to be taking place at 7.15 GMT or 8.15 UK time, uh, 31st of May. But uh, quickly looking back at our current event, of course, we are at Poznan and uh, the circuit which is situated in Poland. And whilst I look, still look again for the... Uh, for the server to get in because there's plenty of servers coming up on my screen. There's quite a few more than I'd like to see. I think if I go down it'll be under C. Apologies if I am going on by, to myself and rambling. It's just it's, I'm trying to get myself there. Uh, I found the ones which it should be. There we go. That's the one we want. So we're going to try and get back in here. To S that should work. Right. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to join back in here. Hopefully we've got all the same um, overlays and bits and pieces that we need. If we haven't, uh, I'm going to apologise now uh, because when I'm looking after uh, the um, the equipment to be to do with commentary and ca cameras tonight by myself. As I said, um, keep out. We're supposed to be here, but unfortunately he let us know uh, rather, uh, ten minutes before we we're supposed to go live that um, he wasn't going to be here. So that it was uh, um, yeah, in inconvenient, shall we say, R rather inconvenient of. Uh, of, uh, of that to happen. So uh, let's see. I should be able to get the overlays back on if I press back on now. Let's have a look. Doesn't it? Don't appear to be coming coming on, which is rather unfortunate and rather embarrassing. Um, but uh, unless anyone can help me out here, so. Oh, I bet, I bet I've not unmuted. No, I haven't unmuted myself, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to try and get this to come up here because I'm having some wildy problems here. Um, right, what I'm going to quickly do is, uh, apologies, I'm going to quickly run some more um, ads here for our guys at GamePod and Inside Sim Racing and Team Hard just whilst I try and fix this again. Again, apologies for the technical problems that we're having, but we'll try and get them back up as soon as possible. But until then, we'll just be back until we run these adverts. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. Okay, so welcome back to round five of the 2013 Tom Ons Local Clio series here at Poznan. And uh, looks as though we're going to have to do the rest of the broadcast uh, with no overlays. And I can only sincerely apologize for that. It seems to be that for whatever reason, our factor crashed uh, literally just when we went to the adverts uh, right after the first race. I can't for the life of me explain for the reason why. Um, obviously, this is all set up for me by Ryan, and then we just went ahead and went. So, of course, Ryan, I'm not saying it's Ryan's fault at all. Ryan does an excellent job of setting up the broadcast. It's just, it's, uh, he just hands the reins over to me, and I just jump in and go. So, what we're going to have to do then is 
unfortunately, this is going to this will be your view mostly, where it just be. I may also have to put the tabs on as well to tell you who is what driver. I know it doesn't look fantastic. I know it looks a little bit unprofessional, but if you guys want to know exactly who who is where on the circuit, then that is the kind of compromise we're going to have to go to there in terms of times. Um, times are going to be a little bit rough at the moment. I don't even have any, any live timing up. I, I am going to see if I can join the server myself and keep track of some times going on. Uh, I think we are in the middle of the qualifying session again, so uh, I'm going to quickly jump on if I can and make sure we can get some t we, we can, can get I can at least get some information in times for you again I sincerely apologize this has happened I'm really trying to get this sorted for you uh, okay so uh, but that was a fantastic run in the first race as I said TPA precision one two three when I'm moving on and uh, it was inter interesting see, interesting to see the dynamic between the pre precision drivers moving through the race. Uh, try to see some of the other guys that are going out here, if we can try and keep track of them. Well, we've got Chris Butcher here, but again, I can't tell if he's on a hot lap at all or an out lap. I can bring you information of that in a moment. And this must be an out. This must be, this must be a hot lap now, because he hasn't slowed down or exited. Whoa, look at the drift through turn one. Absolutely fantastic. Excellent stuff going on here. And uh, he really is pushing hard. And he sweeps down towards turns two, three, and then through four. Once my screen is loaded into the server as a spectator, then I can start giving you info on times as to who is where and who is doing what. We're currently watching, of course, Chris Butcher in the number two car. Retired from that race, apparently he had an incident with Jonathan Nossipin. In what's known as Keith Lee, Cor Keith Lee Corner. Now, Keith Lee Corner is the second to last corner, which is the, the right hander out, out of the little complex, which then takes you onto the straight before the final long right hander. Uh, and apparently, it's called that because in season two, Keith Lee, Jack Keith Lee himself had a, a bit of a, a, nasty, a nasty, yet rather comical incident, and uh, since then, it's been forever known as Keith Lee Corner in TPS circles. So, uh, nice to see we've had some, some incidents going on there in Keith Lee's corner. Of course, Keith Lee managed to go through his corner every single time without any kind of any problems and most definitely second in that race behind Emma Alexander Lauritsen. So hopefully I should be in the server in a second. It's still loading for, for me to have a look. And uh, whilst we've got this opportunity until we get some times up, do be sure to follow Touring Pro Series on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash touring pro series. Also, fo also follow them on Twitter, uh, which is t at Turing underscore Pro. Also, do be sure to check out the YouTube channel as well, youtube.com forward slash Turing Pro Series. Uh, all of our live broadcasts, including this one, and all the broadcasts of the Thomas Low Cold Clear series, do get uploaded live, uh, all the, all the in, the live in their entirety, straight after the race. So if you did actually miss, the, miss anything in the broadcast at all, you can go back and we can check it out for you and everything should be fine. Uh, of course, also, uh, Ryan Callan does when he can and he's not too busy uh, put together some fantastic highlights videos as well for some of the races. So if you want, don't, don't really fancy watching the whole broadcast and just want to see a little bite-sized package of it all, that's not a problem. Uh, Ryan usually puts those together. The latest one that he and he's put together was for the opening round of the Virtual Vets Supercast at Albert Park. Right, back in the server. So I've now got some times in front of me. And the man who's currently from pole is Jesper Tolborg, 144.810. Now then, in terms of drivers who haven't set times yet, who are on laps right now, the standings currently run. Talborg is in top, top from Keith Lee in second on the 44.882. And Tommy Lee third, Pipo, Pipo Rodriguez is fourth, Gary Lennon is fifth, Darren Adams is sixth, and then Chris Butcher, Simon Shepard, Toby Davis and Jimmy Hughes rounding out the top ten. Florian Strauss, I think, has just popped in the time. And my screen is lagging a little bit, of course, on the server. And there's a few more times going. Simon Kilov and John Monroe. Now, they are on laps at the moment. They haven't got much long left in the qualifying session. A bit frustrating because uh, my screen is keeping it on top. And Simon Kilov has gone top on pole position. So Simon Kilov has gone top on a 44.7. Uh, again, apologies that I'm not showing you any other cars out on track. I'm just trying to find the, the lap and try and find if we can find someone on here. We've got John Monroe on his lap. So we will go ahead and try and find him now. On screen... And uh, that's why it's Petzob pulling off. And I think that is John Monroe just finishing his lap and is, is, is what the pass on the screen. He has gone third on the grid. 
for that race. So he, he's gone third on the grid for the race. So uh, limited information that I've got here. Um, but what I have got is Simon Kielov is top with Jesper Talborg second. Then we've got John Munro and Jack Keithy on row two. Alexander Lauritz and Tom Ely on row three. Pipe Rodriguez and Gary Lennon are on row four. Darren Adams and Chris Butcher round out the top ten on row five. Simon Shepard and Toby Davis on row six. Jimmy Hughes and Luca Petklaj on row seven. Thomas Jacobs and Florian Strauss on row eight. On row eight. Oh, Ryan Callan just popped in a 145.900 to go 16th quickest. He's now on row eight. A few more cars coming in as well. I think Thomas, Thomas, uh, Thomas Madizewski just popped in, I think, a 145.204. So he's now just gone sick. There's a couple, still a couple more cars coming through. All right, I think everyone has now set a time. So, again, apologies if this, if this sounds all over the place. Our, fa our factor crashed, so unfortunately we can't, haven't got any um, display overlays for you guys to look at, uh, which we had in the first race. Uh, we ha do have to have the icons up here, which are showing you the uh, what we've got here in terms of the drivers and their names, which is rather unfortunate. Again, I can only apologize that this was a very unexpected problem that we had um, looking through here. So we can scroll through, I think, and see exactly who is who. So... Simon Kielov is down pole position. Second is Jesper Talborg. Third is John Monroe. Fourth is Jack Keithley. Then we've got Alexander Lauritz in fifth. Thomas Malazewski is now sixth. Tommy Lee seventh. Pipe Rodriguez in eighth. Gary Lennon is ninth. Darren Adams rounding out the top ten. Then we've got Chris Butcher in eleventh. We've got a couple of cars missing. We're going to the next session now, I think. I believe. And yes, we are. So we're now, we're now into the warm-up session. So quickly before we go, then we're going to quickly run down the rest of the grid as it shows. And we'll run it down again before we go to the as we're on the warm-up lap going to the race. And let's have a look here. This is this is unfortunately really frustrating, which I, I really would have hoped that I, would, I ideally would have liked to have had Keith here to help me out, but uh, unfortunately he has had other 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 issues deal with and that is sadly unfortunate that is rather unfortunate but unfortunately that is how it goes sometimes uh, so rest of the rest of the field then outside of the top there Chris Butcher 11th Simon Shepard 12th Toby Davis is down in 13th on the grid that is crikey he's going to have to really have to crack his start from there to make use of that one Jimmy Hughes 14th Luca Pecklaj is 15th Ryan Callan is 16th Thomas Jacobs is in 17th place Florian Strauss is 18th so Aji is 19th on the grid for THR, 20th is Eric Strand of Ice Cold, 21st is James Cahagan, 22nd is Robert Powell for Court, 23rd is Jonathan Osserklint for Optimum Sim Racing, Nick Hughes is 24th for Surreal Illusions, Tom Novi 25th for EOR, Scott Sovic is 26th for Optimum Sim, Optimum Sim Racing, um, Tobias Olsen uh, is 27th for Creek, Ben and Matt Richards are 28th and 29th, and Kevin Enderman rounds out the grid. I think also Heinz Petzl did qualify as well, but he has left the games uh, recently. In fact, where in fact, he's just just coming back in. And where did Heinz qualify? Looks like he didn't set a time. So there we go. So that's just how that how that's just how that works. So we're now looking at the, the precision precision boys here as they go to work to practice and practice and slipstreaming again. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kilo, you're going to need that front bumper when you go to the race session because uh, yes it'll keep it's going to keep the front of your car cool but it's not going to be your handling any, any favours it's going to it's going to well, it keep, might keep the radiator cool it's going to really burn up those front tyres but uh, then again it's got a pronoun it had a profound effect on the slipstream it really, he really did get close in fact he was giving <laughs> giving Keithy a nudge there through the first towards the first character also going with him mm. excuse me and uh, also Simon Shepard also in there too and just ahead of them I can see one of the THR orange cars I think is that yes but Talborg I'm not quite sure is Kilov then putting himself up the inside and of course the Thomas Local Clio series he has started to, started to become one of the flagship series for oops oh that's well I don't think that's really supposed to happen for the Precision Boys and definitely that's not what they want to happen when it comes to the race session if they take it to the route I'm pretty sure Jack Keithley He's going to be absolutely seething underneath that helmet. I think he's, he knows that his boys are no lot better than that to try and take each other out. But, uh, of course, at some point, they are going to have to race each other properly wheel to wheel, as we mentioned earlier on, when we get to a, champ a, a stage at the point in the season where the championship ha will go down to the wire. And if it goes down to the wire between two precision guys, there is going to be no love lost between either of them. They will go at it hammer and tongs right from the word go. 
in whichever round the championship can be decided. Uh, hopefully we'll get to the last round and we'll have a fantastic season finale at Knock Hill. Knock Hill always provides great racing with the Clios. Last season was no exception because where Toby Davis wrapped up his championship. But ever since Precision have come into the Touring Pro Series, they really have stopped their, stamped their authority in, in the world of virtual touring car racing. Uh, Simon Keeler does also race uh, in other racing leagues for, for Precision. He drives a BMW 3 Series touring car in, in another sim racing league. And it's very decent at that. Of course, he's also running of course, in the Virtual Viet Supercar Championship and the Virtual Minis. So he's definitely getting around, trying to gain some as much experience as he can. He's a sort of carter in real life too as well. He loves doing what he can. Don Monroe, his dad runs, has a hill climb. I believe it's a, I think it's a hill climb Reynard. Reynard or Dallara. I'm pretty sure it's a hill climb Reynard. And uh, I think he's looking to go into hill climbing next year, which would be absolutely fantastic for the young Scott. I, I believe in sim racing terms, he is a very talented driver, and I'm pretty sure that any talent he does have will be put to very good use on the real race track. And yes, for Talborg, of course, who said the, the TPS's version of the, the very own Iceman. Doesn't say much, just gets on with it. And uh, really does go wheel to wheel when he needs to. Toby Davis is in the pits. Toby, up and down season, wasn't a great start and was rather off the pace. Found his form again in Rockingham, and again at Thruxton, but now it seems to be posh, and he really is struggling, with, especially with the time as are a lot of drivers here. So, we are now going towards the second race session. Another 15 laps here of Pajdam. And hopefully this is going to be something that will be a great spectacle. I may have to switch between the the battles that are going on out on on my RRD viewer and also what's on my screen me spectating in the server. So if there are times that we do miss a few battles and we stay on a pack for quite a while that's me just checking to see what, what's going on with everyone else. So, let's now go through the grid then once more. Simon Keelod then will start on pole position. And we'll have alongside him Jesper Talborn for THR. In, row, uh, in third spot is going to be John Monroe. Alongside him is going to be in fourth Mr. Jack Keithley. Alexander Larrison is now in fifth for Thomas Malazeski, sixth. Obviously, seventh, Pipo Rodriguez in eighth, Gary Lennon ninth, and Chris Butcher running out the top ten. Eleventh place is Darren Adams running out the top Darren Adams, excuse me, is running out the top ten. Chris Butcher will sit himself eleventh, then it's going to be Simon Shepherd in twelfth, Toby Davis thirteenth, Jimmy Hughes fourteenth, Luca Peck Madison in fifteenth, Heinz Petzold managed to qualify sixteenth, seventeenth goes to Ryan Callan, eighteenth is going to be that is one of the Optimus in racing cars. That's Thomas Jacobs. 19th is going to be Florian Strauss. 20th is Jay Anji. 21st, Eric Strana. 22nd, James Gahagan. 23rd, Robert Powell. 24th, John Osclin. 25th, Nick Hughes. And then alongside him on row 13 is going to be Tom Novi. 27th is going to be Scott Sovic. Tobias Olsen. 28th, 29th is going to be, I believe, Yes, uh, I believe is yes. 29th will be Ben Richards. Matt Richards will be 30th. 31st on the grid. Kevin Enderman, the German who likes all things Australian. That's why he's in the team down under race racing machine. So the field make their way then towards the grid. What can happen here this time? Kilo lead from pole here. Is he going to be able to get himself? fourth winner of the season and become the most winningest driver of 2013 in the Tomlinsler Cole Clios. Now what's intriguing is that behind them, Talborg, he seems to, seems to really stacking up the other precision cars. So I noticed that in third place there, John Monroe was right on the rear bumper of him. Now whether that's because he's still angry at the Dane for what happened in race at the end of race one, I presume the answer probably could be yes. And of course we'll find that answer out soon enough going for the majority of this race. Whether or not Talbot's trying just to slow the pace to try and make sure that Kilov doesn't run away too much and uh, and also be considerate to the cars behind because that, because behind them they've still got some 30 odd cars that have got to make their way to the back. But 
Simon Kielov then crawling to, into the last corner. Um, these guys, of course, they want to stay as close as possible because if they're going to put heat into their tyres here, which they're going to do in the last minute, just weaving from side to side just to run run the tyre across the surface and just generate friction, which will, of course, build up heat in those tyres. Also, what will do it is, in fact, running heat into the brakes as well. So the last few cars then are coming off the back of the grid and we're all set for race two of round five of the 2013 Tom Winslow Colt Clear Series run by TPS. End of this race, we're at the halfway point of the season. Let's get ready for a race here at Poznan. Light revs are up. Lights are out, away we go. Cracking start for yes for Turbo. Kilo moves across to try and defend, but Tom Tom's got it. He's got the launch. He's into uh, there we go, a wide screen throws for a second, but Talborg leads into turn one there, so THR has the advantage of position for now, but it is position second, third, fourth, the fifth, Monroe trying to stick it round the outside, this is going to be the duel down towards turn four, these two don't like each other very much after the end of the first race, let's see how they react down towards turn four, side by side in the background, Monroe deep on the brakes down towards turn four, West that brakes and dump and Kilo follows his way through, oh there's more cars up behind, but the people Rodriguez up in the air, I think it was, they side by side, there was a bit of bumping and marching going on. And Adams side by side with Rodriguez. Adams very sideways, crossed up, a little bit of oversteer as Tumble holds on to the lead. Lots going on here. Side by side with Butch now as they head up towards the corner. And is that, I think, is that Davis up already? It is. And, and Tumble has been shuffled down to fifth. So the position boys have had their way with him. And they've already nullified the advantage he got off the start. So. Talborg is down to fifth then. So looking at the standings at the end of the first, uh, coming towards the end of the first lap, it's Monroe leading from Kilov, Keithley, and Larritson. Then it's going to be Talborg in fifth place. Tommy Lee is holding sixth for the moment, of course. Gary Lennon seventh, the Madazeski, Toby Davies up, up three, four spots from 13th on the grid. He's now up to ninth. Peter Rodriguez running up the top ten as Kilov trying to force Monroe out of the way. That's incredible. I thought these guys were supposed to be teammates here, but. Kilov's looking desperate, he wants that lead now, he's going to try and snatch it if he can, but Monroe, if he knows he's got a chance to take a victory, he's not going to let it go so easily. He lost out on, on making it a perfect 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm pretty sure Monroe is an absolutely, the, 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 the red mist has descended, and I'm pretty sure he wants to hold on to this place no matter what. Keithley darts out, and behind I notice Carmel was up for fourth place, but for how much longer? That's Larrison trying to attack and reclaim that place back again, as Kilov goes up the inside, Monroe wants Monroe runs to the outside of the corner and Kilov hits the front for, for, for precision. Down towards turn two, three and four. Monroe's not finished here. We see with the door open again. This is now for Keithy to go up in the, up the inside for second place. Come on, precision. Let them race. <laughs> I'm only kidding. These two side by side. They are racing. Look at this. Keithy up the inside of, through turn five and Monroe has to yield and let it through. And Talborg is going to give him some headaches but he's got his own problems. Larison Try to get back up the inside there again, side by side, down towards turn number seven. And again, Tarbo is being very resilient, he's not giving up the inside line. Larrison has the inside run down towards turn eight. Will he be able to make the move stick? They're still running together. And I think Tarbo's more focused on trying to get past Monroe in front now, and Monroe can see that. And I'm pretty sure he won't, he won't be too welcoming to try and let it welcome him to that third place. We'll wait and see. Heading through the complex once again. And at least Talbot has backup now behind him because he's got, he's got it in the form of, well not exactly Gary Lennon, but he's got Tommy, Tommy Lee in there too. And that is seventh place. Davis is eighth. And looking back to the field, my screen is frozen slightly. Davis is now looking back in 8th place now. He is now holding up Pico Rodriguez. Chris Butcher running out the top 10, but also in there too. Looks to be that Jimmy Hughes. And also side by side with Darren Adams. They're going to go three wide down the pit straight. So Butcher on the outside. Hughes in the middle. Adams on the outside. And also Jacobs and Callum going side by side. How's this going to end? In front. Oh, there's more contact. And somehow there was lots of bumping and barging. But Hughes gets through and says, thank you guys. That was a bit, maybe a bit tougher than I wanted to, but Butch is saying, hold on a second mate, if it's not over yet, I'm going to take that place back if you don't mind. But I think Jimmy Hughes does mind. And now he's darting my way back up the inside, trying to dummy him, 
forcing Jimmy Hughes to break deep. But it hasn't worked. Jimmy Hughes is still wise to the advances of Chris Butcher. Hiding very wide, they're very oversteering moment through turn five. <laughs> In the background, was that, that was keeping, that's Simon Shepherd getting more air as they head down towards that corner. Now then, back over the front, here are the leaders. Kilov lead, Kilov still leading. That's not the camera I wanted. Uh, there's Kilov second. Laris is out for third place. So Monroe's dropping back now already. Well, that is a tyre problem, and Lennon's also flying up here. Look at Gary Lennon. Fifth place in the ice cold racing car. I'm pretty sure his fans are going to be loving this. Gary Lennon is a very popular man around TPS. I'm pretty sure people would love it if you could try and put one over some of the precision guys. Because remember, this is, pretty, this is a pretty intriguing situation here. Gary Lennon is in I ice cold car, but John Monroe left ice cold to go to precision. I wonder just how courteous Lennon's going to be when he tries to, uh, tries to pass a fourth place here. I'm not sure he's going to be too... The answer is going to be not too much. He's got a great run here. Look at this. Looking behind now, if we can get the, get the view. There it is. Looking back, Gary, Gary Lennon does have the toe, but Monroe seems to have enough straight line speed to maintain his advantage in fourth place. And Lennon, look at how much lock he's putting on in the front of the car. It is amazing. And they run out of turn one. Bit of it's been kicked off. I think that must have been from Alexander Larrett's from one of the precision cars in front. Down again towards turn four. And Monroe getting very tough of brakes. I thought for a second he was going to go straight to the back of Lauritsen, but managed to anchor it up as best he could. And the young Scotsman battling the elder Scotsman. Youth versus experience. So far, youth is winning the day, but experience might just win out in the end because Len's going to try and make Monroe go defensive, and that's exactly what he's doing right now. And also, remember, he's bringing Talborg with him and Tom Ely. So the longer that Lennon gets held up, the more those two are going to start coming back at him. And Davis is also breaking away from Pipo Rodriguez in the background as well, as Lennon goes right across the grass on the, outs on the outside, as does Talborg. Look at the head, and McKeel still has the lead, but Keith is giving him a hurry up as well. But I wonder if this is going to be exactly the same scenario we saw back again in, in Pozna. Wait and see. I, I, I feel these guys aren't being allowed to race too much. I, I understand for the for championship reasons, but still, it'd be nice to see them go a little bit wheel to wheel near the, towards the end of the season. I'm sure we'll get it. Keithley now. Does he, does he step a chance to take him the lead? He's got a fantastic toe. Is he going to hold back? He is holding back, so he doesn't want to try and pass Keelov here. He is kind of spoiling the race a little bit. I can see what I understand why they're doing it. And it's, and what's, what's happening here? Lennon's hit the side of Monroe's car. Slightly sideways, puts his foot down and brings the front of the car around again. And Talbot and Ely can set the chance of taking, taking fifth place here. And Talbot is probably going to try and go first, but Lennon's also concentrating very much on Monroe. I don't think he'll appreciate the defensive tactics he put in. And Monroe's a little too deep. Lennon's trying to get up the inside on the A's, on the exit. I think he might always just be there. Down towards turn five. Is there going to be contact? Lennon slightly sideways, but he's through. Fantastic pass, and Talbot's going with him. But, Talbot's getting very close to, to, to Monroe's door. Monroe won't like that. He's now coming on top from both sides. Now Tremini, more contact from Ely. Side by side, and Monroe gets boxed in. And Lennon will be absolutely fuming at that one. He will not appreciate the tactics that he was putting on there. Wouldn't surprise me if he gets a sh if he gets a shove in return from Munro. We'll have to wait and see. Pretty sure he won't. If he has some strong words to say in the press conference later on. And uh, maybe bull bullying, but there we go. Well, he will. I won't. I, I'm staying perfectly neutral if I can. But Munro is really starting to fall away now. So he is now down to seventh place. And the next man he's going to he's going to come he's going to come, come, come under attack from is another THR car, and that's going to be Toby Davis if he can catch him. At this rate, he will. The lap count. We are coming up to the end of lap number five. Kilov is still holding on to Keithy. Ely with a rough row on the exit. On road next man's going to force his way up the inside now. A great run he's got, and also Lennon's got a fantastic straight line speed advantage over Talbot down towards turn one. And Monroe took the place. Oh, he's massively sideways. He tapped Monroe. 
and Rogue just keeps it keeps his foot in but slowly nearly fantastic car control from the THR purple driver. Now then, these two are going to get carried away and they're going to start going on and have a bit of a fight here because if that's the case, I've said it before many times I'll say it again, the harder these two fight each other, the easier it's going to be for both Talborg and Lennon to run away and Davis and also for Davis to catch up. As the Maria gets very crossed up through turn five, the rear end trying to come around again there. Little, little deep on the curb, as was Davis there, but you can see how hard he's pushing to catch up. It's the battle for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. It's Lennon, Talbot, Monroe, Ely, and Davis also trying to pop his way into in the battle as well. And Monroe is almost in kind of no man's land here because he's now under attack from four different sides here, if you like. And then he's cocooned in a mixture of THR and Gary Lennon here. And I'm not quite sure that's where he wants to be. Mind you, I'm not, I'm not quite sure that's where anyone wants to be. But, um, <laughs> moving on. And, uh, Lennon still holding on here. Ahead of Tal, but Monroe's going back on the attack here. This is quite intriguing. I wonder how he's going to take this then. So, looking back now from Talbot, there is John Monroe. These two remember came to blows at the end of the last race, where Talbot clipped the back of Monroe's car, both went across the gravel. Davies went across in sympathy too, and eventually it end, uh, ended up that Talbot took the fourth place from Monroe. Here's how it stands then. Talbot has fifth place, Monroe wants it, and Ely's lagging into the wall big time there, but he's managed to come back onto the track here. And now Ely watches on as Monroe and Tal Talbot go to do battle once again. Monroe's to the outside, but again he's not far along, so cuts right on the inside of the curve and across it, kicking up dust as he goes. Back on board with Talbot, looking back again. And he's really gonna, he's really gonna dive up the inside, he's looking, thinking about it, darts out, just to give him a bit of a distraction. Really getting close, I thought for a second he's gonna give him a nerf there, just to A for a bit of revenge from the last race, and B to let him know he was still there. In turn five now, cross the curves. And Lennon, trying to chase after the two position cars in front. It looks to me, as though, well, it looks like there's two, there's only two precision cars. Have we, lo have we lost, have we lost someone? We, we have. Oh, we've lost Simon Kilov. No, I didn't see this. We've lost Simon Kilov. I can't see him for the reason why, and apologies for that. But race leader, Simon Kilov, well, well, cha well, one of the championship contenders is out of the race. Now, whether that was lag or an accident that he caused by himself, but Simon Kilov, we're down to three precision cars. And apologies for what was going on, but I can't see for the reason why, and that's really unfortunate. We carry on with this battle here for fourth place. We're now battle for third now, because Gary Lennon finds himself in a podium spot, and it's now for fourth. So, Lennon's starting to pull away now. He could possibly get himself onto the rostrum here for the first time this season. Tobol, meanwhile, he's now holding station in fourth. But he's got a very, very feisty John Monroe, and also very eager Tom Ealy behind him too. For company and Ely's going to try and make this move. Fantastic spot here between Ely and Monroe. Side by side, they're getting very close. Careful, boys, don't try and take each other out. Monroe is go goes inside as much as he dares, and he just about gives Ely, Ely enough room. Ely slides, slides across the apex of the inside of the first corner. Oh, more contact, more hip and shoulder from these two. Fantastic. And Monroe stays in front but for how much longer? Because Ely is not going to like this, and Davis is right on the back of them as well. Into turn four, Monroe covers, has to really go on the inside, they're sideways again. There's more contact, and Davis is going to watch on and see, and, and he'll pick up the pieces from any mistakes that happens here, but I, I can't believe Simon Kilov was asked that for the second race. I thought for a second there was only, uh, uh, only either, either one position car had driven off into the distance, or something had, got, something had gone wrong with one of them, because I sort of thought we were, I presume we were down to three. And we have lost one, it's Simon Kilov, so one of the major championship contenders will not score any points in race two, and for the reason why, I'm not quite sure. Now, if anyone in the chat can tell me... Let's have a look. Um, <laughs> if, if, if anyone can give me some extra information to the reason why Kilov retired, that would be very much appreciated if they can find out. But for now, we'll have to find out from Kilov in the post press conference as this is really the, the battle of the race. I, I, you, you can't take your eyes away from this battle because it's fantastic. This is the duel for fourth then. There's Lennon in third place. He's trying to scamper away. Talbot has fourth. He's starting just to gap Monroe slightly, but Monroe will reel him in down the pit straight. Ely 
staying on the back bumper of the young, young Scotsman here. They head on to the pit straight once again. And Tate Davis in at seventh place. Just watching and waiting for his moment here. And look at how they all close up. That, that's the slipstream effect. Down the pit straight. Monroe's going to try and go to the inside. Edie's going to try to go around the outside run, but Talbot covers the line. And Simon's not in TeamSpeak anyway, so that could have been a disconnect. Just been told apparently Simon's not in TeamSpeak anywhere in our TeamSpeak server, so it could have been a disconnection. It could be a disconnection that caused Simon Key not to do that. If we can find out from him later on, if he comes available, then we could possibly have a chat with him. As Monroe gets very sideways, was there contact with Talborg? Didn't look like it. And he's forced his way up the inside, and that's now for fifth place. Monroe's down to sixth, and Monroe must have, he, 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 he must have smoked billowing out the top of his helmet and, and his ears because he must be absolutely seething with rage at the moment. He's coming under attack here and getting extremely frustrated by three, these three, TH, three THR machines. He's now having to deal with Toby Davis behind his seventh, the reigning champion. Oops, that's a feel. Uh, <laughs> Press the wrong button. Um, heading into what looks to be turns into, into the little complex here. Halborg has the run at the moment in fourth place, but Gary Lennon having a fantastic drive so far and just almost blissfully unaware of what's going on behind him. And it, it's not exactly going to be a victory, but it, it's definitely going to be something that will allow him to that will allow him to do well. So what we're going to quickly do here is if I can try and find what's going on here. Now I'm quickly keeping tabs on the two guys in front of Larrett, the battle between Larrett and Keith. Now Keith he still has the lead, but Larrett they're still running those to the tail, just keeping close proximity. There they go, flashing with the shot there. So Lennon, has th there is third, and if he can stay there, this would be a fantastic result for him, and I'm pretty sure he's a very popular man. As behind, there is one right up the inside of Ely again. So this lot are at it once again. We are on lap number 10 of 15, so if we complete this lap, we have a third of it to go, third of the race to go. Now what's his next move going to be then? As Monroe locks up, gets very close to the back of Talborg's car, almost thought about a pass, but just, there wasn't a gap at all, but he, he, he was definitely looking at an opportunity to try and make a move before. Getting pretty feisty here, very racy indeed, but Ely He's literally got his car glued to the back of it. Monroe's like got glued. And look at the defending Monroe's doing. Oh, contact! And that, to me, looked like Monroe was defending just simply too hard. He pulled across, and where else was Tom supposed to go? Now, surely if, if that's Monroe's... Surely if that is Monroe's defending too much, I, I wouldn't expect Monroe to do that too much, unless he's getting a bit frustrated by the fact that he's just... Or, he feels like he's being bullied about by these THR cars. I'm not saying he is because there is some hard, but in many cases, fair racing going on. And I'm sure Monroe's going to be very vocal about, his, about what's been going on here in the press conference, as we've already said. And one has to wonder exactly what the race is going to be like when we move to the brand new 2013 Bio Cup cars from Croft, up, from Croft onwards, round number seven. And we'll use them to finish out the season. Croft at Silverstone on the national circuit and then to Snetterton, and then to Knock Hill. But we're here at Pogdown for the moment. Round five, race two of the Tom Wanslow Cole Clio series. And Lennon, once again, sweeping to the back end of Ely's car then. What's he going to do this time? Will he give him a nudge? Are you going to give him a tap just saying, Oi, Tomo, I'm not, not very happy with you. Come on, let's get on with it. So down towards turns two and three. Once again, Monroe is sweeping this way and that. Can he dive up the inside towards turn four? Yes, he can. He's gone too deep. Ely turns in, clips to the right red quarter. Monroe's car shoves him off the track as well. Well, that was a nudge from Ely on the exit. Now, whether that was Ely just showing his displeasure, and I'm pretty sure these two have some stern words at the end of the, end of the race. And, uh, wow, this, this is going to be pretty intriguing in the process talk, because I can tell you, as Ely once again darts out and has a think, just trying to distract from a road, gives him another shove on the on the exit of turn seven, and they go side by side again as Davis watches on. He tries to go round the outside through turn eight, and now through turn nine, and Davis getting very close to give his uh, his sister teammates some backup. Now through ten and through eleven, and 
12 and 13, Monroe bring a little wide. Is he going to take advantage? He's up the inside again. Here comes Toby Davis. Is there going to be more contact? Davis trying to go around the outside into turn 13. And he hasn't done it just yet, but Davis is very close indeed. So Ely gets back through and is into fifth place. This is the hottest battle on track at the moment. We are on, in terms of lap wise, lap number, come up to end lap, end lap number 11, start lap number 12 of 15 here. So we start the lap here. We've got four laps, including the one that we're going on to now. Davis pulling out from the back of the precision car of John Monroe, down towards the inside, and he slots to the inside to give his teammate a toe. That's very smart indeed. Is it going to work? Up the inside of turn one, yes it has. Because David Davis is in sixth now, Monroe's down to seventh, and Monroe must be thinking, what have I got to do to get these GHR boys out of the way? This is getting absolutely absurd. That's exactly what's going through his mind right now, as Davis said. Is this going to be a chance where Ely's going to let him through, or is Monroe going to give him more headaches to prevent that from happening? And they anchor it up just in time as they run through turn four. Now, just in front, Talbor has caught up to the back of Gary Lennon, so that's going to be a battle for third place. Very quick look at the guys at the front. This is Ian Larrison. This is, this is the guys that are leading at the moment. So Keithy will take his third place victory of the season as oh what's going on here that's Lennon and Talborg fourth and still Davis hasn't gone to see it yet the weather and apparently oh, that's the reason why so yep yeah. yep yeah, there we go so Simon Ke yeah Simon Keelove just messaged me on Twitter on, on TeamSpeak here he's not happy at all he's lost his internet apparently so he's actually well he's he is his reaction to that is, uh, well, expletives, I should say. <laughs> He's definitely not happy with that one, and, who can, and to be honest, who can blame him? Second in the championship, one race one, and his race second race ends like that. So all I can do is feel for him, feel for him on that one, because that was rather unfortunate for him. Very unfortunate indeed. Now then, quickly, you have to drag away yourself, and else that's a fantastic battle for fifth. Look what's going on here. Talborg has caught the back of Gary Lennon. This is for third place here. Now, Talbot can get a good slipstream, which he's doing just now. Pull to the inside. Then it can see can see when he be, is absolutely defensive, unless he can sweep it round the outside. We're going to find out here. Under brakes, down towards turn one. Talbot to the inside, and a little bit of oversteer, but he, just to get the car pointed round the corner, and he's done it just there. Lennon's trying to fight back across the cross on the inside. Runs a little wide off the kerb on the exit of turn one, and Talbot is now third. Now, I think that for the moment, he is too far, far away to get, to get past uh, at the car's the two precision cars at the front because we're now currently on lap 13 and 15 so we've now got three, less than three laps to go back to what, what magnificent battle going on here for fifth Ely in the THR purple car ahead of Toby Davis in the THR orange car and then John Monroe in the, th the, third, third, of the third of the three remaining precision cars and Ely's lagging a little bit here as Monroe again tries to get his nose up the inside of Davis turn number sev seven. He sweeps through turns eight and nine and will come towards the complex once again for the thirteenth time. And this is crucial because Davis knows of course Ely and Davis are in, in the top five in terms of points, top five, top six. So these guys know that as many points as they can take is crucial. But also, they know that they have to try and take points off precision, and at the moment, they're not really, they're not really doing that in the teams of the team's championship, because, yes, Kilov missing, but uh, John Monroe behind them, he's only eligible for driver's points, not for team points for precision, because he starts to do with ice cold, and he then switched before the previous round at Thruxton to TH, to precision, and... That means that because you switch teams, the rule state you cannot score points for the team that you switch to. It means that it'll have to be down to Larrickson, Keith Lee and Kilov bringing home the spoils for the team's championship, which is what they're ultimately aiming for. So, back at the front then, very quickly. Here, here is your leaders, Alexander Larrickson and Jack Keith Lee. No, in, fact, in fact, I'm pretty sure it was Alexander Larrickson making his first victory. I'm sh I think... I believe it was, so I... Uh, all these position cards, of course, all look the same, so you just try and work out exactly who is who. I bl I, it wasn't even Larrys or, Ke or Keelov, I apologise for that, for my incompetence there. <coughs> now then, looking back to about the third, Talbot just holding on, locks up a little bit, and Keith Lee's there. Now I think for the moment, this battle... Ooh, 
I was going to say it was going to slow down, but Davis is now getting a hurry up from Monroe. A slight nudge from the young Scott through turn on the enters of turn seven. Monroe really just doing what he can just to stay with and make a make make a point here. In the background, up Pipa Rodriguez in eighth and Darren Adams in ninth. Those two are running, having a great race. Qu quickly running down to the rest of the order. We stay with this battle going on here for sixth and seventh. But look at it. With Jimmy Hughes in 10th with Chris Butcher in 11th. Ryan Callan in 12th. And battling just in front of Simon Shepard in 13th. And we've also got Jay Angie down in 19th. And the likes of Heinz Petzold and Jonathan Osserklins just in front as well. In terms of cars that we've lost, but apart from Simon Kilov, we lost quite a few in fact. We lost Scott Sobic, Alex Strana. We also lost uh, Kevin Ender with all those guys on the first lap. We lost Luca Petklash. Uh, Matt Richards and of course the Simon Kilo with, with, with that disconnection and then Tobias Olsen the latest car that we've lost as all oh, Monroe's trying to force his way out the inside he's given the big hip and shoulder through turn one Davis is not going to like that at all he will not be impressed and he's not going to give this one out, up, up without a fight here it comes it's Monroe and Davis they're battling over six and seven as I think we're on the final lap now yes we are on the final lap and Monroe defending the inside line. Davis is always going to be one to try around the outside. Or will he switch back on the exit? He's going to try it. Has he got the better? Has he got the better run? Out of turn four, down towards the corner. Again, trying to dummy down towards turn five, but Monroe holds the place for the moment. Fantastic scrap. So Monroe's got a place back, but for how long? Because Davis, he's not going to give this up easy. He's going to try and move again. Monroe again defending that inside line, and again to the and. And again, Davis will try and run a, a, a wider line on the entrance. Try and pull alongside on the exit. Has he got the better traction? And he sort of has. But he can't pull alongside just yet. But he's trying up on the inside over the curves. And Monroe will not give way for the moment. I've got to keep, I've got to keep track of whereabouts our two race leaders are at the moment. I'll fucking get to them. You don't really want to move away from this battle here. It's too close. Both over the curves. Oh, and Davis going to try at the inside. More contact. Pushes Monroe wide. Oh, Monroe won't like that at all. Second time it's happened to him on the, the final lap. And Monroe's not going to take that line down, I don't think. Come back to it quickly, because here come the race leaders. And it's going to be a win for Alexander Larrison. Just ahead of Jack Keithley. Formation finish for position again. It's going to be Tarwalk third. Lennon fourth. Healy fifth. Who's going to get six? Davis on Monroe. It's going to go to Davis. Davis gets six. Monroe gets seven. He will feel... That's the second time I'm sure he got cheated out of. He, he may feel he got cheated out of uh, uh, places there by both TH Orange drivers. I'm not 100% sure on that one. For me, it looked as though that Davis tried to force his way through. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. So as they come through, then, I'm going to read you off how they finish then. So Alexander Lauritsen gets a race victory. Now. If anyone in the comments down next quickly in the chat can just quickly confirm. Apologies for my incompetence. Did Larrison win the first race or was that Kilov? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it was Larrison. I think it was. It may, I, I may be wrong, but so we'll have to have a chat with these guys in the uh, in the race. So I'm sure so, someone will tell me, or, or they can poke me on TeamSpeak just now. But. Um, Excellent stuff then. So let's quickly run down through the order then. Be there and just mute the game, and we will put the background on so the uh, the current event. So as they finish very quickly before it comes off the screen, Larrison wins the race there from Keith in second. Tarborg finishes third to be on the podium. Gary Lennon finishes fourth for Ice Cold. Fifth goes to Tommy Lee. Sixth goes to Toby Davis in the final few corners. John Monroe finishes seventh. I'm sure he had a pretty tough weekend for him. Pipe Rodriguez, fantastic result for him. Eighth place the GT Competizione. Ninth was Darren Adams and Jimmy Hughes rounding out the top ten. Chris Butcher finishes 11th, ahead of Ryan Callan in 12th. Simon Shepard finishes 13th with Florian Strauss 14th. Then the rest we quickly run them through. From 15th downwards then, in, in order down to last, it's Robert Powell, Heinz Petzold, James Gahagan, Jonathan Osserklint, Jay Anji, Tom Novi, Nick Hughes, Thomas Jacobs, then Ben Richards is the last car that finished across the line. Tobias Olsen, Simon Kilov, Matt Richards, Luca Petklaj, Kevin Enderman, Eric Strana, and Scott Stovic.
were the cars that retired. Now, those were our seven retirements from the race. And Thomas Madazewski also was unclassified after 14 laps. So, that is pretty much all the racing done. We've got a lot to, to talk about, of course, with our drivers when we come to the next part. When we come to the press conference, which will be in just a couple of minutes, we'll get the drivers through hopefully very soon. But until then, we're going to run some more adverts. Stay tuned, and we'll come back in two. Game Pod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. Game Pod, the choice of champions. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim Racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. Alrighty guys, so welcome back to the post-race for round 5 of the 2013 Thomas Local Clear Series from my TPS. Uh, quick before we get into the... Uh, into the... Uh, I forgot what I'm saying here. <laughs> Forget into the interviews, because we're trying to get a few more drivers in as, as they filter through. Uh, of course, two fantastic races. They were both won by, by Alexander Lauritsen. And they had some great racing going throughout, and uh, well done to everyone involved in that one. We're going to have a quick chat first with, I believe, let's see who we've got in our room to have a chat with. Don't yet have Alexander Larrettson. I know for a fact that he is, um, well, I thought he'd be around somewhere, but unfortunately he doesn't seem to be. So, uh, for the moment then, unless we can get him in here, we're going to have a chat with uh, the one who's, he's highest up in the order that I, we, we can have a chat with, and that's uh, Mr. Jack Keith, he's in here. So, uh, Jack, um... For you guys, um, not uh, not a bad day for us today. You and uh, y your boys managed to pretty much almost take a clean sweep of both podiums, and uh, you had two wins for Alex. Uh, just talk us through your day from your point of view, because you were you were playing more of a supporting role to try and help out both Simon and and, and Alex there, rather than going up for your own gains. Well, I've got to say, it's been amazing. It's back on top, back to like how it was in Brands. Um, no, but I'm just when 
all, when we're all around each other, especially batting for the lead, it's just a big team game, and I just want to think more about getting to the finish with all of us getting all the points. So if we can do that, then I'm not really bothered where I finish in, in the order, to be honest. So the great thing is, of course, now Alex has his two first first two victories of the season, um, which is which is fantastic news, of course, for all of you guys. And of course, um, pretty much almost clean sweeps to the podium means you've got fantastic haul of points towards uh, your standing in the team's championship. Um, was there, was there any part today? Um, I mean, how um, how much of a, a blow was it? For Simon's disconnection, connection, because apparently you believe that he lost internet in race two. Um, how much of a blow is that in terms of points wise? Because of course he's a, he's a championship contender, and he, from what he's I've seen to me, he, he's obviously very unhappy about that. Well, secretly you'd probably think I'll be like jumping for joy, but no, I'm not. I at the moment that happened, I was thinking more back to race one when it happened. I was like, oh, he, he might, he should be able to come back having race one. But when he didn't, and I saw he didn't come back, I. I was like, oh man, this <laughs> this is unbelievable. I can't believe it. I just felt really bad, you know. And so, just very quickly before we before we move on, um, of course, as you're the, the man who looks who looks after everything on the touring car side for um, for precision, we pretty much now reached the halfway point in the championship. We've run five races. We've now got five to go. Going to the second half, going looking back on the first half of the season and then going forward. You, 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 you'd have to say, in position's first ever attempt at, in, in Clio's, you guys have had a fairly good crack at it. I mean, front-wheel drive-wise, any other series that you've done is the minis, and you've done pretty success, successful in that. So it seems to though that did has the, has the success in minis helped for the transition into Clio's, or has, has there been different characteristics going forward into that? How, how would you sum up the first half of the season uh, for Precision? It's just gone very well. We worked hard. I mean, there was times at Rockingham where we were struggling in a Thruxton. Maybe it could have gone a little better. But overall, it has been a very, very good season. And I'm just hoping we can keep this up. Well, well done, Jack, obviously, for your team's fantastic results for the victories, of course, for the podiums for yourself as well. And uh, hopefully you guys will continue the success going forward into the second half of the season. And, of course, um, just very quickly, of course, 2013 cars coming through from Cloth to Croft onwards. Uh, are you guys looking forward to that? <laughs> Cloth, you just said. Um, uh, good, good, yeah, I meant Croft. very much. Croft. I mean, I've not <laughs> driven them yet. I don't know what they're like to drive. I imagine if they're five years... Um, no, sorry, if they're the newer car, I'm guessing they are obviously different. I don't know, not driven them. But it'll be interesting to find out. Excellent stuff. Well, well done for your team's performance today, Jack, and hopefully it, the form will continue going forward into the second half. Certainly. Thank you very much. Okay, now this is going to be pretty intriguing because I've now got a choice of who I have a chat to first, because I've got quite a few drivers that I would like to definitely have a, have a chat to. Uh, I think before some, I, I fear some fireworks may go off, but I'm going to have a chat with the man who uh, was close and yet so far to getting th third place in race two. I'm going to want to have a chat to Mr. Gary Lennon. Gary, of course, last year you managed your first two of the victories in TPS ever in here at the uh, Clear Race. You come back here and you almost get yourself a podium in race two. Just just talk us through your weekend, because it looks like you almost had the run on, on Jesper, but uh, he just pipped you in the end. Yeah, it's a pattern I've seen before with that pesky Tallborg fella. <laughs> he, he enjoys rounding me up at the end of races, but boy, it was a tough one. But so, uh, both, both races were uh, fantastic from, from my point of view, even starting from 15th up to 7th, I think, in race one. Excellent. It, yeah, they're absolutely fantastic performances. And uh, just looking back on your first half of the season, I mean, would you say probably uh, which which races would you say were the highlights for, for you going forward so far? Of course, you've had some pretty good drives where you come through from near the mid pack towards uh, near into the top ten to score points. So you definitely seem to be someone who can grab good starts and then consistently move through to get those all important points scores. Point scores. Yeah, it's it's my old friend Super Paul. Is plaguing me again. I just seem to have nightmares in that qualifying format. I'm afraid. And then going forward into the second half of the season, of course, we've got the race at Most, and then we've got four, got the 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 four English uh, rate rounds going through from Croft all the way through to the season finale at Knock Hill. Um, 
what are you um, what are you hoping for results wise going forwards, or what what would be an ideal run towards the end of the championship for you and Ice Cold? I would like to maybe to try and keep operating within the top ten, and um, I'm really looking forward to the new Clio. I've had a little taste of that, and uh, I'm looking forward to that changeover. Excellent stuff. Well done on your fourth place day and your results and your fantastic finishes. And uh, hopefully we'll see you get even better finishes and just and just the same finishes in the second half of the season. Lovely. Thank you. Right. Now then, I'm going to have a chat to these two guys here who I've, I fear something may happen. And they promise me it won't. But first of all, I'm going to get, get the THR side of the story here. I'm going to chat to Toby Davis here. Toby, you had a, a fairly subdued um, race one. And we'll talk about that in a second. But, um, I mean, race two, and effectively what happened on the last lap between yourself and, and John, just, just, just talk us through it. Because it, it looked as though there was, there was a nudge and you pushed, uh, there was a bit of a nudge and there was some contact and it eventually you got through. You know, it's just obviously looking at it from a neutral context point of view, you know, that's why it looked from, from my point of view. But obviously, from your point of view, how did, um, how did it all how did it all go about? How did it all um, proceed from your point of view? I've watched the replay. Um, me and John have had a word after the race. Um, the, the server was pretty laggy in, in the second race, and um, there could be a bit of lag involved. But on, on my screen, it's it's one of those where there's no contact visible, but his car jumps ahead, so it's like I've hit him, but um, obviously nothing intentional. Um, and I, I felt at the time that I hadn't hit him, so I uh, I carried on and took the position. But of course, if it, if I if it does transpire that um, that you know it was uh, de determined that it's my fault. Then, then the, I'm sure the positions will be swapped or I'll get a penalty for it. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a difficult couple of couple of races for me. I, I didn't have um, anywhere near enough time to do the practice I've done before in this in the season. So um, uh, I think I came in with about 50 laps into practice. So um, yeah, I went into the practice session and uh, uh, finalised my quality setup about 10 minutes before qualifying. <laughs> And um, it showed really. Uh, I was uh, mega slow in race two qualifying, and it, it set me back. Um, it's a shame for for Kilo that he's he's disconnected, but it it means that it's pretty much a three horse race unless Kilo can do something later in the season and come back. Um, he's dropped now to the level of points with with me. And well, I suppose he's still in it, but keithley has got a massive gap now. So looking back, then obviously now we've had the first five five rounds of the season. Um, obviously. With, with, with precision making our debuts in the clears, obviously keeping the advantage from last season was never going to be easy. Yeah. Has the task of trying to hold off precision been hard, been harder than you were expecting, or has it has it been a challenge that it's it's has been, been very been a bit it, difficult, as been difficult been, as you as you was as anticipated? Yeah, it's been very difficult because it's hard to predict exactly where they'll be in terms of pace. Um, you know, sometimes you get one of them is significantly quicker. Um, you know, and it, it just seems fairly unbelievable. Um, and sometimes they're all together on the track and drafting each other and working as a team. So they, they are a very good, solid unit. And uh, they showed that today. They smashed us off the park, basically. Uh, not literally, but um, in terms of their, their pace. And they were just better prepared today. So we'll we'll have to sort things out. When the new mod comes comes in, everyone gets a fresh set of setups and a fresh set of ideas. So uh, we could see a change in pace. Um, I think actually what will happen is they'll get quicker, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> well, these nuclear do have turbos, so they it, it might be something that uh, they take advantage of. But uh, yeah, just very quickly, of course, going forward, of course, with the nuclear is going through. Um, I believe you guys have already even taken, I suppose you could say, inverted commas, delivery of your cars, and you've really been painting yours up already. Um, initial signs, how are you feeling about the nu nuclear? Do you think there's some positive steps forward? Uh, positive steps. Forward uh, being made in the yeah, from it's a the much, it's now a much, the new one. It's a much more refined mod, and it's a much more. Um, I, it, it requires a more normal driving style. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, the current Clio's require a slightly different driving style to anything else I've ever driven, and the new Clio's are a bit more suited to. Um, particularly, I mean, there's no. You drive the current Clio's on the throttle, and, and the new ones you drive a little bit more with your hands. So. Be interesting to see um, who that suits and who it doesn't. Certainly, it will suit people who um, who don't who struggle a little bit with tyre wear more than the current mod, I would say. Um, so um, yeah, we'll, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, they, they are a completely different car and they have a completely different set of attributes. There's not much carried through. So um, 
yeah, it's a good update, and they look and sound a lot better. Um, not a big fan of the shape, but they they certainly better modeled. So, as you'd expect from four or five years of development, quite frankly. But there you go. Well, hopefully they do help you towards you know, helping your fight with with precision the rest of the seasons. But uh, until then, well done on the results you have managed to, and the points you may have managed to scrape together to, scrape together today. And hopefully the next couple of weeks in in the in the swan song for these clears in Moss, you can hopefully give them a send off with a victory. But uh, until yeah. then. Well, well, well done for today. You'll be seeing some special liveries as well. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Uh, until then, well done for today and uh, best Cheers. of luck for the next round. Right, I think probably our last person we're going to speak to, because I think we are starting to run out of time, is the, the other person in the incidents today. He saw quite a lot of THR guys around him. Uh, John Monroe. John, I, I know your, your day was quite um, eventful, but not in a good way, because you had you're involved in quite a lot of fights and mostly with THR cars. I understand, of course, you're not particularly very happy with what's been going on, the antics, and what was what was going on, all, all the incidents you were involved in. Just, just, just going from the top. Can we just, if we just go through your your race weekend as a whole, because it looked as though you were struggling with with pace and with tyres from the get go. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had a, a really good testing actually this week. We worked really hard on um, getting getting the car suited to the track, and it's a difficult one to nail, and we seem to do that. And um, we were we were finding you know great pace that we uh, well especially I hadn't had last season, uh, and heading into quali um just well just today actually my pedal set developed a, a problem where it was I the throttle was idling on when I wasn't um, anywhere near contact so uh, that that gave me a slight problem and it was costing me a bit of time and of course it was costing a bit of tires with understeer into the corner I just couldn't seem to get it turned in but um we kind of persevered and uh, qualifying one went okay. Uh, and, and I got a great start to the first race and managed to get up to the fourth position which was required and really act as an anchor for the guys in front because I knew I couldn't stay with them um, with you know I, d I maybe didn't have as much pace anyway but of course the um, pedal problem wasn't helping too much and uh, just dropped back a little bit and acted as an anchor and then um, thought I drove a good race I managed to hold on to the fourth position of course until I was bumped off um, second last corner but um, we'll see what happens with that one but uh, yeah uh, altogether a fantastic job especially by the team um, Jack and Simon and Alex did an extraordinary job uh, this this whole week to really you know home, home in on um, the perfect pace of the track and uh, get an absolutely s sensational result. And then of course we we have to talk about race two where you have a lot of battles going on with 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 Tom Ely and of course with to with, with Toby and, and and the likes around. Also I think with also with Jesper was around there too and Gary Lennon. Of course, the big talking point was what happened on the last lap. Of course, now we've heard from Toby, and he said, of course, that he feels it was lag and, and on his screen. Um, just talk us through the series of events from your point of view, because no doubt, obviously, you'll have your own point of view as to what was going on. Yeah, I think that the last lap incident isn't on the on the front of my mind, but it was more the fact that um, I was under the um, I was under the impression that you know bump and run moves and um, contact, which costs on a driving position, is disallowed, and to have that happen to me five, six, maybe seven times in the early stages of the second race, just um, we'll, we'll see what the stewards have to say about that. But I was under the impression that's not allowed. Um, and especially when no positions were given back, so uh, you know, I, I I race clean, I I race as cleanly as possible. I, I can race aggressively, but um, I don't I don't intentionally, or maybe even if it's not intentional, I don't knock someone wide um, sideways and then not give the position back or let them or gain a big advantage from it. I just don't think it's right. So of course that was costing me the tires from going sideways about seven times. And um, I was just struggling a little bit, and I found myself in that battle. Uh, and then, I, I mean, I was I was fine with the the Toby incident. I think I was following him for about ten laps, or um, maybe it was less than that. And then it came to the last the last you know the last lap. I made a, a nice move down the inside in turn one uh, to gain the position. And then um, you know, uh, of course, you, you saw what happened. I think Toby Toby explained he had a bit of lag, and that that's that's fair enough because you know the 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 um, server he was correct was experiencing some lag, but. Uh, those positions, I believe, should should be reversed, but we'll, we'll wait and see. So, not not many hard feelings towards Toby. It was more um, the action that was happening earlier on in the race that I'm a bit um, more angry about. But yeah, as I say, we'll let the stewards uh, see what they think of it. Overall, fantastic event for Precision, and um, really, really a bad luck for Simon uh, in that second race. But that's you know that's that's sim racing for you. It just happens uh, occasionally. So, uh, overall, mixed mixed feelings, but generally pretty happy. And just very quickly, of course, going to, sec going to the second half of the season, of course, you now got fi another five races with precision. New clears coming in from Croft. Um, what are you hoping for for the rest of the, rest of the Tom Wins Like Cold Clear series? Well, um, Toby's comments have given me encouragement. They're helping people that struggle with tyre wear, because that seems to be my one of my downfalls. But um, yeah, I drove I drove the car. It definitely feels different. As as he was saying, it requires a different driving style. And not sure if it'll suit me or not. We'll wait and see. But um, 
of course, Precision uh, will be working incredibly hard to try and get the setup nailed for it and um, see if we can maintain the, the pace we've got towards the guys behind us. And um, who knows, maybe I'll try and sneak a win by the end of the season. Well, fingers crossed. And, uh, and but hopefully we can see you on the top step of the podium uh, at some point in the next five races. But uh, until then, uh, well done for the, res the points that you have scored today. And of course, again, well done for Precision for getting two victories for Alexander Larison. And uh, yeah, best of luck for all of you guys in Team in Precision and everyone going forward into the next rounds. So, and that, with that, that pretty much wraps up the coverage for round five of the 2013 Touring Pro Series Torrance Local Clio Series. Uh, just before we finish up with the next events and just our goodbyes, a quick, quick thank you to, of course, as always, to Tom Winslow Cole and to Team Half for their continued support. And, of course, all our backers and, and sponsors as well and supporters. That is, of course, GamePod.co.uk, uh, Casio and Miltech Sport, who, of course, help out as, as part of Team Hard. Uh, Inside Sim Racing TV for the forums. Of course, we want to say thanks to continued support from Cancer Research UK, also to MultiBC for allowing us to host, host the broadcasts. Uh, SimSync Pro, of course, for the mods and uh, everything else as well. Uh, everyone else as well who does put together a fantastic league in Touring Pro Series. Then, So, as you already mentioned, just a quick reminder of what we've got coming up next. The next event coming up is going to be the sixth round of the 2013 Virtual Viet Supercar Series, the first of two stops in North America, a double header in fact. We're going to America and Watkins Glen for round number six. It's going to be another Enduro event, I believe, so that's going to be a pretty awesome event. 5.15 GMT or 6.15 UK time this Saturday, 25th of May. After that, we've got a season finale, which is the last round of the Virtual Mini Challenge. That is going to be at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. That will be taking place at 7.15 GMT time or 8.15 UK time on the 31st of May 2013. So that is next Friday. So if you want to see some fantastic front-wheel drive racing other than, as, as well as Clio's, do check out the minis. Those guys are up for a championship and it is going to be settled in Mid-Ohio. And as for the next event, well, you can see it on the calendar right here. It's going to be round number six. We head to the Autodrome Most in Czech Republic. For this, the 2008 Clio's Swan Song. It's going to be its last ever race before we hand over to the brand new 2013 Clio's. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with all the information, you can, of course, visit touringproseries.com for all, all league information. You can go to the, the forums inside simracing.tv where you can find out all the information. If you go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash touringproseries, you can see a picture of the brand new 2013 Clio's. Clio's, and of course, some pictures of the THR cars painted up as well. But my, my, me personally, the car, cars look fantastic, uh, both in a normal, normal skin and in THR colours as well. You can also follow us on Twitter, which is uh, at Turing underscore pro. Also, be sure to follow Tom Winslow Cole as well, which is at Tom Winslow Cole, and Tony Gillum as well, which I believe is Tony Gillum 34. You can also find Facebook pages for both Team Hard and Tom Winslow Cole as well. And also be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube as well because we do have our YouTube channel where all the, all the live broadcasts, including this one, will be uploaded back in full so you can watch them all in there and back in their entirety whenever you please. And also we do get some fantastic highlights videos put up in time as well. Occasionally, when you can, by Ryan Callant. The last one he put up was the opening round of the Virtual Viet Supercars. And with that, we pretty much round up. So thank you very much for watching. Apologies for all the problems. The apologies we didn't have Keith back alongside me in the commentary box. And apologies for the problems with the R Factor game crashing just after race one and having no overlays for race two. I really do apologize for that. Hopefully that won't happen next time out. But until then, this is Scott Woodbridge signing out saying thank you very much for watching. And we'll catch you in two weeks' time for round six of the 2013 Tom Winslow Cold Clear Series in Most. But until then, bye for now.
Game Pod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. Game Pod, the choice of champions. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. 